going to decide this match without a shadow of a doubt. There's the headshot. Needs one more. When it comes to, there we go hey hello everyone okay so welcome how's it going we can put our headphones back on excellent uh welcome to the guns of boom challenger series season two as we're into the spring season to cup three i'm jason Kappen, joined by harry okay well you're not harry you're not no. you're definitely better looking i'm a color but you're also a lot shorter on camera for some reason <laughs> always goes to that we forgot to get him his <laughs> booster seat today which is a little bit of fortune but i'm joined by blue who's gonna be filling in today because harry unfortunately had a prior commitment mm-hmm but I'm glad because it's been a while since we cast it. I think back in September was the last time as we were hanging out doing some uh, some VR stuff. Um, it's good to have you back, man. How you how you enjoying Poland? Your nonstop fights back and forth from the U.S. Yeah, I haven't had a lot of time to enjoy it. Just yet. I just got here about six hours ago, maybe a little bit more than that. Not kidding. Not kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad to be back. Obviously, I, I got to do the Gods of Movement over in Katowice, and that was a blast. And now I'm here to do a little bit of the season as well. So it should be some fun to dive into it and see how the teams play in these online cups. I need to beg you to raise your seat a little bit, though, because I feel like, you know, don't talk to me or my son ever again right now. See if I can. <laughs> I'm getting on camera. Hey, there we go. There we go. It's slightly Welcome better. to the big boys table. <laughs> Sorry, but yes, we do have Cup 3 kicking off today, and we do have some of the brackets already filling out across as we're going to be covering two semifinals, the third place match, and of course, the finals as well. And this is all leading up to the big event in Brazil, in good old Sao Paulo, I believe it is. Have you been to Brazil before? I'm trying to think. Yep, uh, I've been there once in 2016 for the... And how'd you enjoy it? Uh, it was a lot of fun, actually. Really good food. Brazilian uh, barbecue. Mm -hmm. Really good food. Um... Just really cool, like atmosphere and stuff like that as well. I, I really enjoyed it. it and the fun. most passionate esports fans oh. I think I've ever come across. Hundred percent. Those those guys go absolutely crazy over esports events, uh, especially especially when they have like a Brazilian team in the event. That whew, be careful. I was back there in like 2012 or 13. I think 13. I think it was that eh, 12, whatever. One of the years. It was a long time ago, and it was like a, a Brazilian team beating a Korean team in League of Legends, and they went wild. It was insane. <laughs> there was like a hundred people in the crowd because uh, we're at like an expo, but it sounded like a couple thousand people. But anyways, that doesn't matter for now. As what matters now is the bracket we have for you today, because this is going to be leading up into the qualifiers for this one. We got Dust2 Esports up against Lazarus, and we got Impact Gaming Simplicity. Well, they're North America, so I don't think they're actually playing in this one. It's going to be Unbreakable up against Forza, more, most likely, since last time we did check the brackets, that wasn't updated just yet. But Unbreakable have yet again been able to make their way through into the semifinals, which is important, because when we did finally get to cast them, I'm sorry, I've just been informed, we do not have their team just yet, but from what we saw was Element up against Forza, and Forza with getting a top two finish and two cups back to back. I'm assuming they're going to be the winner of this. But I think one thing we can talk about, Blue, is that EU is very volatile when it comes to uh, Guns of Boom. You know, we were talking about before, like, oh, you know, how's Noble doing this season? You know, as you asked me, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, well, they, they got wrecked in the first cup. They got knocked out by Lazarus in the very get-go. Um, they're actually currently in sixth place at the moment, and they got knocked out early on against Dust2 Esports. So, like, the top four is really hard to determine in Europe, but I kind of like that, where everyone's gunning for those number, like, one and two spots. It's, it's good to see more upsets instead of, you know, just a clear front runner coming out of some of these events. That's cool to see, especially, I mean, it's unfortunate for teams like Noble, Mana, that have got the big sponsorship now, so they're going to have to try and fight their way back in a little bit later on since they're only holding that top six position. Um, but for guys like Lazarus that are still holding a top two spot, they're still sitting in a good position and, and obviously trying to earn their way into that uh, land finals coming up in a few weeks. Yeah, and you're talking about positions. Let's actually take a look at the standings so you guys get an idea of where currently everyone does lie. And you can see just number one and two, that gap between second and third place is insane. And considering the winner series closed off with like a 10 point difference between second and third place, which was 10 points determining if you go to Texas or not. And all, all expenses paid trip to play at a live event. And to have 75 now be the difference between the two spots is insane. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, Forza isn't sitting that much further ahead than Lazarus. So there's a chance for those two to exchange it, but very much so these two are the clear front runners sitting in, uh, sitting in the, the head of the pack at this point. And it's looking like with the results so far this week and the point we're at in the bracket, uh, that's likely going to stay the same. We've got Forza at one side of the double elimination bracket yep. and Lazarus on the other. So it's like these, these two, once again, are going to end up with at least top two positioning. So pretty much it's coming down to this for all the teams. You need to beat Forza or you need to beat Lazarus in these semifinals because of the seeding now because of how far ahead they are of everyone else they're never going to be seated on that same side of the bracket so they'll never meet before the finals 
So if you want to break through into second place or first place, you have to beat one of them in the semis and then go on to beat the other team most likely in the finals. And I think that's really cool to see that you have these two teams really standing out from the rest of the pack. But if you compare them over to North America, where the, the difference is, what, 45, 35 points between second and third place between Impact and Simplicity, and then another 25 between Simplicity and Only Nation, much closer pack going on over there. But I think, you know, we almost have our forerunners to be going into Brazil. I think these two teams really want to get there. Yeah, very much the case. And like we said before, it's been it's been tough for any other team to be to, to be able to take them down at this point in the event. So, yeah. so they're still sitting in a really solid position as long as they maintain it. And we've been given no reason to believe otherwise based on the result from this week's tournament so far. They've been tearing through it just like we always expect. And what's kind of interesting, if you think back to the winter uh, series, we had Unbreakable. I know we talk about this every week, but again, it's something that we should talk about. They had such a massive lead over everyone else. And then they got knocked out really early in the final cup and they only skate by by like the 10 points. Like they were already qualified through, but the team under them was only 10 points behind. But they had such a massive lead going into that, and then just one bad showing almost knocked them out of contention. Mm -hmm. So that's why all these teams need to continue to participate and you continue to perform week in and week out. And someone, at least here in Europe, needs to try to dethrone the two champions at the moment as they have taken a cup victory each themselves. Also today, it's just a European Cup, so we're not going to be covering North America at all. But we do have a special treat. We'll be doing a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a podcast, I guess we can say, except you'll be seeing our faces so uh, yeah, I, I apologize vidcast yeah it's more yeah a vidcast um, we'll be covering you know what's been going on in the scene at the moment and kind of what's leading up to um, Texas and of course Brazil later on but uh, this will be happening every other week so at the moment as it stands we do Europe one week and then we do Europe and North America the one after and then we go back to Europe and North America Europe and North America the week after so we'll be filling this little podcast thing in on the European only shows to give you guys some extra guns of boom action and of course uh, Harry or uh, Lethal will be joining me back next week because well, Blue's just too handsome. I, I, I actually, in my contract, I have it written saying I'm not allowed or supposed to be cast for someone who's more handsome than me, so we have to kick him off, wow. get Lethal Thank back. You. I'm sorry. Appreciate it. The vote of confidence, at least. Putting me ahead. <laughs> my little bell sprout over here. What was the word you used earlier in the elevator? What? <laughs> <laughs> to describe your hair, you used a certain word. Oh, alfalfa sprout. Alfalfa. I like bell sprout better. It's from a, it's from a movie. Yeah, it's from um, Ra Little Rascals. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. I see it. It was more. Yeah, yeah, it's back, right here. It's, it's like right here. Front. It's it's the blame the flight. It's, it's yeah. Mm. I haven't been able to. It's more. It's more me being lazy and not putting product in my hair, but still. Looks good. Looks good, man. So the first game we'll be covering, um, as I'm assuming since we don't have a result yet for the element up against Lazarus game, would be Dust 2 against Lazarus. And Dust 2, uh, we think back to Cup 1, they actually got through to second place. They played against fours in the finals and unfortunately didn't fare too well there. But they've shown they can make it into the finals. They've shown they can beat some really good teams. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if I go back in my handy dandy notebook here real quick, uh, they did beat Lazarus actually in the semifinals. So we have a team who's been able to do just that. But as you saw on the standings, it's not really enough to get them through into a top two seating where only the top two teams will make it into the main event in Brazil. And we also have another event coming up after that in uh, in July. Um, well, I'm assuming from what I read earlier on, it's been mostly announced, so I'm going to say it with confidence because we're supposed to talk about it later in the podcast. Um, at Yeso in Cologne. Oh, okay. We get to play in the cool. Lynx Arena, the final game. The final match will be there in the stadium, the Esports Cathedral, as they've coined it, mm -hmm. um, You know, with a packed out a crowd as well. Don't know who's casting it just yet. I would imagine it's not going to be us together because, again, my contract says you're not allowed to be more handsome than me. That's why I work with Lethal for the most part. Um, but it's going to be crazy. Lethal's looking any chance to retaliate here today. Well, he's, he's off in the UK doing his own <laughs> event right now, so he doesn't get a chance. He doesn't deserve anything like that. Um, but we're actually about to head into our first map here. It's going to be Paradise Island as we kick things off here. Sorry for the little bit of delay. We're just trying to get the teams all sorted and ready to go. We'll hop in right now. You can see Lazarus all over on the right-hand side. And will not reborn. It's going to be Dust 2 on the other on the blue side here. All right, well, let's get into it, though. We've got them going up against each other now, and the first attempt to try and move in for the mid-capture point. It's not going to end up going so well here, unfortunately, for Dust2. Lazarus will take solid control over it, forcing Dust2 onto the outside, but Doron's going to try to make another push into the end. It's very close to a decap here, but that bird is going to do a lot of damage. Thankfully, he's able to hide behind the pole, keep himself alive, waste a little bit of time. The spleen will come in to bail him out, and off of that, they'll steal away control again and very quickly come back into the game and take the lead away from Lazarus. And I think that the points they do have at the moment was from that triple they did get uh, coming out of door, and then you can see Rumbay quickly respawn back in. Almost have the lead without the point. He's going to look to turn it around just a few seconds. Door, though, does respawn. Some nice explosive damage coming through. Look at the spleen coming in from behind. He needs the shotgun out. He's up close to personal. Takes down excellence. And again, that's not going to be enough. He needs to get more frags than that. It looks like the red side here of Lazarus are going to maintain control. Got Sergio coming under a little bit too much pressure, so he's going to be one of the last to fall. That should be a pretty quick recap coming in from Lazarus. Romeo is going to be kind of in the heat of battle, but manages to get one knockout with a knife and nearly picks up a second. 
Excellence will move in to finish off that second kill. And it's looking like Lazarus are going to be able to hold on to control of A for now. But as we can see, Doran putting a little bit more pressure on it. Some nice long range skirmishes coming out from him. He's able to buy time for his teammates to push back in and they'll get the decap off of that. You can see, I mean, Lazarus is one of the few teams we've seen actually be super aggressive off the back of the capture just to kind of take the fight to them, especially when they're down on health or down on be uh, being able to heal themselves up. Find King gets a nice little shot off and does get the point back for the favorite. Dorn just on like basically one health right now. Eventually he will fall, and I would imagine the push is going to come back in, especially for Divine King, who's already so low on HP. He must have well rushed their spawn, get as much damage as he possibly can, get the respawn back in, or hey, maybe don't listen, maybe do the opposite, do no damage, <laughs> take it down, and they're probably going to lose the point off of that now. Still a very close game between these two guys so far. A lot of back and forth capping. No one's really been able to maintain solid control of the point for longer than like 20 or 30 seconds here so far. It's just swung once again over towards Dust2 East. Sports' is control, and it's looking like they're finally going to be able to move back and try to get the closer to a tie at about the 540 point mark that Lazarus is sitting at right now. They've been able to pull back. They've been like able that. to kind of lessen their lessen their presence on the point, just try to pick off some of the Lazarus members from range. And this plan's actually worked out really, really well as Lazarus just can't seem to get any significant damage onto the Dust2 guys right now. And you see Lazarus don't expect people to be here towards that side house on the staircase, just trying to get some easy chip damage in before they transition back towards the point. So we take advantage of the rotations, the way Lazarus are playing this, but again, Excellent's going to be coming in from behind. Looking for Doran, who's eventually going to fall to Lord Mono. And they should have the man advantage. They're going to push back at a point. Yes, we're going to see one little elimination come in for uh, Army, I believe that was. But I'm not going to do much off that as the reinforcements are going to be there yet again here for Lazarus. And again, it's uh, Lazarus coming close. They're able to get themselves onto the point. They've slowly been inching closer and closer to a recap here. But never actually being able to push it all the way because the spawn timing coming in from Dust 2 is just too strong. Always getting the reinforcements in the nick of time and preventing Lazarus. They're kind of throwing players onto the point one by one right now now on Lazarus' side and it's not serving their purposes and they're falling behind very quickly as a result of this and in fact Dust2 is going to continue to get even more aggressive than they've been in the past here now. Nice push from Sergio. He's going to get help from Armies there as well and with that they'll pick up two more knocks and well have nearly won the game off that now all the way up to 990 and they should be finishing it off in just a second. Great hold by them. Yeah easily going to be able to finish this one off. Oh, there he is. A thousand point Cap has been finished off here, and that's going to be Dust2 again looking for revenge against Lazarus as they beat them in Cup 1, looking to do it yet again here in Cup 3 as they did get dropped short in Cup 2. And I think that again came down to the plays of, of that side little hut. Playing that staircase, getting a lot of chip damage in before they push the point, and instead of doing the Lazarus style, take the point, get aggressive, die, get as much damage as possible, they take the point, they back off with high HP, and they just pick them off as much as possible as they try to transition. And, and Lazarus just didn't adopt their style at all. Yeah, I mean, we, like like I was saying at the end, there, Lazarus really just throwing guys onto the point one by one as they were respawning and never really able to get enough numbers. Weren't really ever able to keep enough players alive to make a significant force to actually push their opponents and Dust2 off that point. Uh, like you were saying, Dust2 had really good control of the side hunt. Not only that, but uh, once they finally got control right around the five to 600 point marker, they kind of pulled back their aggression a little bit and tried to play long range for about a minute or so and that's what really threw Lazarus off is up to that point it had all been really close to the chest and all the fighting had been very close to the point and suddenly they found themselves in a situation where they didn't really have that kind of fighting going on anymore so with that Dusty was able to get I think quite a few free kills coming off of that and that's how they really were able to push ahead and take such a significant lead by the end. It's true that was like a really quick switch in style because they were going for like the flanks they were flanking around behind Lazarus when they were on the point getting a lot of damage in we did see as X got kind of got pincered in there and then just to switch up to be so passive I, I guess Yes, they didn't really, you know, pick up on that quick enough, and that's something you're gonna have to do when these game modes, you know, don't on these maps don't last. You know, if you look at your traditional esports and you look at like what well, your Counter Strikes, where a map's gonna last an hour, you know, you don't have that amount of time. You don't have that luxury of being able to take your time and adapt your strategies as the map does go on. No, you have about four or five minutes to do that. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to adapt quick enough, then you're going to lose maps and potentially lose your place in the leaderboard, which I think technically Dust2 could... Actually, I don't think they'll overpass Lazarus even if they do beat them here because they have a big enough lead, but they'll get one step closer to be able to do that in the future cups. Yeah, very much so. And, and once again, it, it helps to kind of shorten that gap that exists between a lot of these teams right now as well and hopefully make things a little bit more competitive yep. as we move into future weeks here. All right, so we should be getting on to our second map uh, momentarily. It will be Old Factor, a little bit of TDM, uh, some team deathmatch. And we've seen, again, some like different styles when it comes to this map, or in, in general when it comes to TDM, the pl a passive style of sitting back, waiting for your, your opponents to come in in really low-scoring kind of games. We've also seen some really <laughs> aggressive games where even if the lead they have, they're going to push to you and just kind of keep you off, caught off guard. Um, but a lot of high ground control going to be important as we do get into this map. Um, and I think it comes down to that initial start, you know, because you're the one that gets to choose the dictate the pace of the game. If you have a lead in the beginning, how do you want to play it? Slow, fast, 
You want to be super aggressive, super passive. You want to kind of change up your style of mid-game. We'll, we'll find out here, and we'll find out who gets that early lead. Like you said, a lot of it's going to come down to how this initial fight goes. So here we go into it. It's going to be on our second map. We're going to be going into Old Factory 4. And like you said before, it is de deathmatch. So there's straight up fragging going on between these two teams. And at the moment, it's looking like a pretty even start to things here. Dust 2 lose two players off the initial skirmish. Lazarus lose three. And with that, though, Lazarus still managed to get a couple more accolades in the process of fighting that. And as a result, end up with just a few more points. Very quickly, though, Dusty's going to end up battling that pack. Divine King, along with one of his opponents there, going to be a bit of a knife fight. But at the end of the day, Divine King will come out on top of it. You can see Romeo now taking some high ground control here. And I think that you're going to see the spleen maybe go for a challenge out on this one as well. A nice little flank comes in, Armace. Oh! Should have had that, but Divine King should eventually oh. fall anyways to Sergio. Got the nice little burn onto him. But still, you know, you should have had clean eliminations like that. Now Lord Mono being pushed off the high ground, trying to run away from this one. You can't run away from Dorn. Just going to quickly clean him up and still maintain that lead here for Dust2. Dust2 are going to continue to push that advantage. Sergio gets grouped up. Unfortunately, the burn dot's going to end up taking him down just like we saw before. Excellent's coming under a lot of pressure right now, but Divine King's going to try to bail him out. Doesn't end up working, though. Arm Ace along with the Spleen, both able to hold that position. Arm Ace with another nice hold. He will finally fall to Romeo a few seconds later. Lord Mono is going to group up with him. They'll be able to try and turn the tables a little bit of three for one trade going into the favor of Lazarus. Romeo is going to look for one more, but this is a long range engagement where Doran will take the advantage. Again, that burn dot, though, doing a lot of damage might lead to his death, but no, yeah, he did end up going down to it, unfortunately. So he gets knocked out there as well. And with that, Lazarus just barely fight their way back into it and now take the lead with the most recent knock onto the spleen. I mean, Spleen's not really useful anyways, is it, right? Or is that the, uh, no. that's the most useless? Or is that the gallbladder? I don't remember. There's a couple useless organs, I think. Well, I don't feel like the Spleen's been at least that useless here. He currently has the third most points on his team. And this point difference, this is probably one of the biggest ones we've seen so far today, at least on this map. We've had, we've been juggling between like four and 15 points, now looking at about 30. You can see again, now Lazarus played a lot slower here, trying to play the angle, trying to play the two on one, which you can see excellent to trade out on. And again, just dodging back and forth, trying to get as much damage as he possibly can before he does get eliminated. Sergio and Armace, now Doran able to get three quick kills themselves to really close this distance. Doran just barely surviving at the end of that one, so he's gonna be able to back up, try to keep himself alive for as long as possible here. But unfortunately with that little HP, just a whiff of the wind will be taking him out, so he might just kind of scout for his teammates a little bit, open up an opportunity for the Spleen to try and trade things out after he moves in a second later. Divine King, in the meanwhile, manages to pick up a double right there. Some nice pickups from him, and now he'll continue. The Conquest tries to take out Armace, and Armace will eventually fall, I think, because of the Burn Dot. No, it looks like it is going to be able to make it onto the outside of that one. Still, though, it's a very back-and-forth affair between these two teams. Lazarus and Dust2 basically trading evenly in every single fight that's happened so far. And as a result, no one's been able to cut ahead by more than about 30 or 40 points. Divine King's just been chilling here this entire time, it seems. Looks like Lord Mama's going to clean up the spleen somehow there when he actually didn't even get the drop onto him. I feel like Lazarus are playing like really standard, like really set positions, and yet Dust2 aren't really adapting their style. Nice little explosive damage coming through. Excellent's going to run around the corner into two players. Somehow gets the first and the second! Should not be able to win out on trades like that. Eventually will fall, yes, but he gets the damage done. Keeps that lead growing, and now they're just 20, well, just about 20 points away here from closing out this map. They've nearly got it. Dust2 still have an opportunity to get back into this. They're only 60 points behind, but they have to pretty much deny everything that Lazarus will attempt to do, which is not going to be an easy task at all here. Nades coming out from the members of Lazarus to try and hold back Dust2. They're going to push forward regardless. Armay's trying to get some damage in, but no, he's going to fall four more points away now, and at the end of it, Lazarus will take the win, tying the series up at one to one. See, I just feel like this was, if you look at map one and map two, where you had Dust2 dictating map one, they were being aggressive in the beginning, they really passive later on, and Lazarus were just kind of playing this super standard game, and just sitting holding certain corners. Divine King was in that little corner more often than not. And he didn't really ever get punished off of it, which is kind of surprising, considering you, like they knew he was going to be there, they knew he was there for the most part. And then at the end, when they knew they had the lead, they just pushed. I don't know, it seemed like pretty standard play style, but it seemed to just kind of favor them a little bit better, and it seems like Dust2 didn't respond while having to be the ones on the back foot. We had an opposite problem, basically, where it was uh, it was the guys over on Lazarus that were having this issue on the last map with failing to adjust. This time it was Dust2 exactly, yeah. that unfortunately failed to do so. Um, I think at, at the midpoint there, again, it's, it's usually like one or two adjustments that oftentimes determine the winner of these matches since they're relatively short, and that time it was Lazarus realizing, like, okay, guys, we're just going into these fights and evenly trading. If we continue to do this, the, the winner of this match is, is probably going to end up just being random 
because we're not able to like get any sort of significant advantage in any of these fights. So they did exactly as you said. They 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 sat back. They played a lot more passively, a lot more standard, just kind of held angles and things like that. Um, and unfortunately for Dust too, they just continued to walk right into it, and we're never really able to try and maintain those positions for themselves. At the end of the day, Lazarus just continued to hold that, like you were saying, and we're able to melt Dust too more than once and finally cut ahead with just enough of a lead to take the match. We saw some questionable play I want to say I don't know it's kind of hard to theorycraft how the situation would go but if you're if you're that player on like one HP um, and you have a teammate next to you you shouldn't be the first one peeking right you should yeah. basically use your teammate to tank the damage for you so you can get as much damage as you possibly can with that life you have remaining uh, I guess the downside is both you are low HP but you would assume that your player coming in your teammate coming in would have um, like the ability to heal where you already used all of your consumables earlier on. So, I don't know, kind of interesting to see that they didn't really use that because we saw a lot of like the top teams like to go for those kind of strategies of like, all right, you're low. I'm going to tank the mm -hmm. damage for you just so we can take him down in a quick two-on-one and then I'll heal up later and then you'll you know, do it again, something like that. So, I'm not sure if that was maybe some miscommunication going on. Maybe I'm reading into it too much, which is definitely a possibility. Um, but, you know, Dust2 definitely struggled on that map and I feel like they they kind of struggle in general when it comes to TDM. Like it comes to these like lower scoring games and, and more about not playing an objective, having to play just based off your, your aim and positioning. Well, thankfully they don't have to worry about that going into the third map because it's going to be a control map. So there'll be a good opportunity for them to try and maybe outstrat their opponents one more time and try to take the win in 2-1 fashion to push them on into the grand finals. Ultimately, this is where Lazarus are going to have the opportunity to do the same exact thing. So we'll have to see how that pans out as it is going to be over on Europe Square will be the final map that we'll be jumping into. We're actually right around the corner from that, aren't we? Uh, yeah, maybe like a five minute drive. We're in Europe. <laughs> nice. Yeah, makes sense. Hey, at least he didn't, um, you know, slam dunk from the three point line. <laughs> um, That's an know, old one. No one out there will get that. Literally joke. no one understood. No that. one wanted. I don't care. I understand. That's all that matters because <laughs> I get to burn you on air. Um, so, yeah, we're just waiting for the game to actually start up. I think we're having some uh, lobby problems at the moment where well, we should be hopping in there soon. Um, and then, then speaking of, I guess, Texas, as we can kind of take a step back while waiting for, for the game to be ready. Um, I don't know, the, the talent lineup has been kind of confirmed and kind of not confirmed. There's like three people, four people that are confirmed and like one that's kind of not just yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of just going to say it was you as like the <laughs> one that's like <laughs> not confirmed. Because it, it's, it's literally like for the podcast part of the show later on, I have like clearance to say who's there. Um, but you, we have a to, to be determined spot. But at the moment, yeah. you're set to go to that. And that'd be kind of cool. We'll get some we'll get some good old barbecue. You know, if you come to Brazil as well, we'll get some Texas barbecue. We'll get some Brazilian barbecue. We'll do some back Korean to back. barbecue in Cologne. You know, we'll hit all the barbecues. I feel like Cologne might not be the optimal place for Korean barbecue. We might have to have a stop off in like Los Angeles for that or something like that. that I don't know. There's, is, there is a place called Bulgogi House in Cologne. That's pretty good. That's true. I never actually went there. I don't it's think. been, it's been, yeah, we were, we were trying to go there. Mm -hmm. And we went to the steak place, the Argentine steak they place. They were closed for like two weeks or something like that at one point. That messed us up. Can we tell a story about you in Cologne? What, what story? <laughs> there's, all, there's a few stories, I feel like. There's a couple of stories. What, the one I'm thinking in particular is air conditioning. Yeah, go ahead. I think we, maybe we should. This is going to sound rational to like any, any North American viewers that are watching, but for any Europeans, this is probably going to freak them out. So go ahead. Be my guest. Well, I'm, I'm waiting to see if we're actually about to get ready into the, into the lobby so we don't have to go into this really off tangent um, that just makes you look like you're weird. I'm not. Just North American. <laughs> don't, put, don't, don't lump Canada into this. What well, Canada's AC too? Not as not. Eh, I don't know. I don't know. I've only been there once. Canada definitely has like as much AC as the, as the US does. I don't think anyone actually cares about the story. No, be honest. they're probably like just get the game going. Basically, we're trying. We're trying. Basically, I lived in Germany for two months. My hotel had an air conditioner, which is apparently very rare because Europe in general doesn't have a lot of air conditioning. Um, and You're then power I, conscious, you know, gr being green. Yeah. And then I bought a fan as well for that hotel room because it wasn't cold enough. <laughs> it was like the hottest week in Cologne. Or hottest like two weeks or whatever. Really hot summer in Cologne. And you had air conditioning. It was like 20, something, like 22 degrees in your, your little... Yeah, it was garden. hot. It was the hottest week in Cologne in like a few weeks, right? So I'm sitting there at my flat, the extra boost. 40 something degrees. And you're in your place with like 20 degrees. You're like, oh, it's too hot. I'm going to buy a fan. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what are you gonna do? <laughs> you could have come you, over. You, you come would high. not survive in the apocalypse. Probably not. No. Like, if, especially if there's a zombie apocalypse, I think you'd be. I'm one very. Of uh, I'm, I'm very fluffed up by the pleasures of, of modern life. So, if there's ever a breakdown of society, I'm probably gonna be one of the first to go. I'll yeah. be completely honest. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I've just accepted that. I was gonna get really so. grim with that one, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> maybe by your own accord, it will happen. If you're like, ah, oh, power's out, no air conditioning, I'm done, boys. Done. That's it. Just gonna sit in my apartment and wait. 
<sighs> I just you're like wearing pants there too. I'm just like, why are you wearing pants? If you're too hot, wear wait. Shorts. Oh, I had shorts like a couple times. Yeah. Anyways, um, the lobby is almost ready to go. I think they were having some issues. That's obviously why we were talking about some random things. The other game coming up, I think, has been confirmed. It will be Forza and Unbreakable. Um, so we have to see the number one team with 175 points of Forza up against the number four team of Unbreakable at 65. But funny enough, the top four points are the top four teams at the moment. So that's kind of cool that there is some consistency in Europe. Mm -hmm. Again, it's really weird to see Noble kind of being knocked out yet again, this time by Dust2, who might make it into the finals if they can beat Lazarus on this final map of Europe Square. I mean, it's even weird to see like Lazarus getting knocked out again. Like we saw them get knocked out in the past too, but these are both of our, our our previous gods of boom teams that are that are not able to place themselves in the top two. Well, no, Lazarus have, have been top two both times in Cup 1 and 2 because mm -hmm. they, they beat Forza in Cup 1 and lost to Forza in Cup 2. Something like that. It's more noble. Like, they're the ones that won Gods of Boom 4-0. Like, they stomped Lazarus. Yeah. And then now they're struggling to make, like, top five. That's rough. I mean, they did have a really rough first cup playing against Lazarus in the very first um, match. Like, round of 32. You're like, oh, who are we going to play? It should be easy, boys. And you, and you log on to ESL play. And you're like, and we're playing Lazarus. Like, <laughs> come on. Please, <laughs> come on. There's, there's got to be someone out there. Maybe, you know, the shirt that uh, Nokia was wearing just didn't really fare out for him well because fate did not do well for him mm. in, this season, in this series. Not so far, anyway. It's going to be the comeback story. Late season. It's going to be hard. It sure is hell going to be hard. At 50 points, they're 125 points out from first place and they're 100 points out from second. You want 100 points for winning the cup. And then, obviously, you have to take into account that people who play that you're beating are probably going to be, like, the top two at the moment are still getting points. They have to like win like two cups in a row or like three cups in a row to have like a top two berth. Just win. Yeah, it's easy. It's right? I mean, that's the strat, right? Yeah. It's just easy. win. Yeah. Yeah. I never think of that. <laughs> it's so simple. It is weird though to see them falling apart, um, because like to talk on a serious note for a second, when we saw them at the Gods of Boom event, they seem like really well put together as a team. Um, like strategy wise, they were kind of outwitting Lazarus on more than one map. Uh, and kind of outstrating them just in that respect. So it is kind of weird to see them fall so early multiple times to uh, to teams that don't have as much of a reputation as like as teams like Lazarus, which they play on like the big stage and everything like that. So I don't so I don't know if, if their performance was just due to Lazarus maybe like kind of uh, having to deal with like the stage jitters for the first time. Maybe they weren't able to perform that well back at the Gods of Boom event, or something's happened to them since the Gods of Boom event where they've kind of fallen off. But it's it's strange. To maybe say it was the, least. The, the pressure of having like the world famous Blue casting them. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you had to assume world famous. Was, you had to assume I was going to go that yeah. route. There's no way I was going to give like a legitimate reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's it. I could have been. We'll see. Because right now Lazarus are losing. Well, technically they're tied. They lost the first map. So maybe it's maybe you're just the curse. Sorry, Lazarus. <laughs> I know like one of their like team acquisition people as well. So he might get mad at me over this now. Just tweet to, to us here. I don't even know your Twitter anymore. Blue Blue Cast at Blue Cast. It's like the most straightforward thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really call this casting right now. I call this Blue Podcasts. Yeah, that's maybe true. Yeah, update your Twitter handle. Blue uh, Blue Rogan, maybe. No, not at all. Definitely not. All right, yeah, let's go into the game. Third and okay. final map of this series. Where do you get Blue Rogan from? I'm not letting this, you go, this go. Because Joe Rogan has a podcast. Yeah, but there's like a he's million like, people have a podcast. Right, yeah, but he's got like the best podcast, so. <laughs> Well, getting into it, like we said before, this is going to be capture points for our third and final map. It'll be like the first one, except instead of one in the middle, we've got three spread out all over the map. So far, both teams have been able to take control of one point. Bit of an interesting start from Dust2, because it looks like they went more for the middle point, trying to rush on to get control of that. Now they've fallen back and taken control of their home point in C, and it's worked out pretty well, at least to start, but it looks like C is being back capped at the moment, so they're going to lose that. At the same time, though, they're also stealing A away from last. Lazarus, they should still be able to maintain a relatively similar lead. At the moment, C is the only actual point being held uh, as we do have A and B finally turned over towards the blue side of Dust2, so that leads you to continue to grow here. Excellent, able to get a nice little double. Viking's going to be shut down. I wonder if we've actually getting caps off this. They've been able to actually trade, I think, three for three here. But I think that's going to be the full wipe coming through, though. Oh. I think what it was going to be is Lord Mono actually going to come in and clean up a few, and he's eventually going to fall. So look at that scoreline now. 
Almost 200 points. You're getting close to 200 points in lead for Dust2. And this falls in line with what you were saying before about how Dust2 definitely seemed to shine a little bit more when it comes to these strategy-focused maps where you have objectives to play with in the middle. So far, that's leading itself to be true. However, at the same time, Lazarus are trying to battle this back. Unfortunately, same problem that we actually seen them have in previous cups and our previous events where they're kind of over-focusing on one point and leaving themselves a little bit too susceptible to back caps. It seems this time, though, they've been able to control the chaos. They maintained A, prevented that from getting stolen away, and now we're trying to hold B. Thankfully, they're going to be able to do that. Oran moves in there, almost is able to steal away another frag by knifing one of his opponents, but it's not going to end up working out. So once again, Lazarus will maintain control, and as long as they can keep this for just a few more seconds here, they're probably going to be able to run the comeback and take the lead. Yes, to be will be turned over. Lazarus is going to start getting positive points here to close this distance, close this gap that Dust2 has been able to build up over the course of the first few minutes here. But again, these eliminations are constantly being traded out. You see three people currently down for Dust2. Lazarus had the opportunity to pick up, you know, two points here as they're going to actually lose A, going to go back for C. You see Romeo trying to push up and get super aggressive in towards the response. Is catch him on the transition towards the next point. And so far, it's going to still be one for one at the moment in terms of points control. B's being turned over to the blue side of Dust2, but they're still going to have a lot of action coming their way. Dust2 just barely holding on to that lead. They've got to be careful though. Romeo moving in right now. He's going to be able to back cap the A point away from them. C is currently not being challenged at all by Dust2 either, so they can just steal away a quick double cap as a result of that. We can see Lord Mono looking to hold on to control of, of A in the meanwhile, while that's attempting to be pushed. But B, at the same time, is also being stolen away. So this is a good comeback attempt here from Lazarus. They, in fact, just took the lead away from Dust2 with this quick exchange of points. I was just looking to start trying to build up some steam here. A is still in their control, B in their control as well. C finally being turned over by the Spleen in a little bit of time here is being contested. Spleen will eventually get the elimination, yes, but it doesn't matter because they're still not being able to get any sort of contestant on these other two points. He's going to push up, get the trade here with Romeo. He's going to try to transition towards this B position now. But only like 130 points left to go here for Lazarus to close out, close out the map and the series. My shots from Arme is doing quick damage to the defenders on Lazarus that are attempting to hold on to B. They will fall for the most part, but Lord Mono coming into the last second is going to try to save this. Romeo also trying to knock out Spleen, but Spleen goes straight for the neck with the knife and is going to be able to pick up another frag as a result of that, maintaining control for his team and just maybe allowing them to battle back into it. Unfortunately, though, Lazarus are still crawling up towards the end point here, and unless they can stop C and A from being capped right now, that'll be the end of it, and Lazarus will just barely inch themselves to the top and take control of this series 2-1. to one. It's not going to be a repeat from Cup 1 where Dust2 were able to knock Lazarus out in the finals. Lazarus will maintain strength here. Lord Mono with 10 eliminations and 7 assists, but excellence with 226 points, being the real MVP of the team running around, getting these points held. Though I want to give a special shout to Lord Mono. You know, he was the one sitting back, I think, on that C point and just holding it for his team for a majority of the time. They're making sure they had control of at least one point, get some sort of, you know, point influx in your economy instead of, you know, stagnating and pretty much losing every point in full control of it. And then obviously being the important caller of saying, yeah, there, there's like one or two guys here. You guys go hit, you know, potentially A and then, you know, just trade these points out. So good job by Lazarus, considering they were down by almost 200 points in the first, like, two minutes. Yeah, really good comeback from them. Uh, we talked about in the first map about how Lazarus were having problems with adjusting their strategy completely fixed that going into this map right here. It was a lot cleaner, uh, really like on the nose as well with those adjustments. There wasn't like a massive delay period where they kind of were like sitting there not figuring out what to do and just throwing themselves at a point like we saw back in map one. They very quickly adjusted to it. I will admit it took some time for it to finally come into effect, uh, but they finally were able to catch the members of Dust2 in like uh, in suboptimal positions really just push them out of most points. I think they almost had a triple cap at one point during the match there as well. I be surprised. So, so really were able to get good amounts of control and off of that funnel enough of a lead. And while we did see Dust2 also make their own little mini comeback towards the end there. It was unfortunately just a little bit too little too late yeah. as uh, Lazarus already pushed up to like 11.50 by the time Dust2 got solid control of the map and Lazarus could just hold a single point to win off that. They were, they were like at 11.50 when Dust2 had like uh, like a thousand points and then by then yeah. as long as they maintain the one and then just defend with all four players they were going to win anyways just off the eliminations to Dust2 had to transition over and get the full trip cap. You can see the Spleen and Excellence both really stepping up for their teams really similar eliminations and assists but the deaths just a little bit different but Excellence really being that good rotator for his team good kind of roamer to pull off all these uh, you know a lot of these eliminations but more importantly these caps you know eliminations are a big thing but being there to take those points or at least getting that you know, one elimination, you need to take the point, and then that one elimination later on to take the point, nine limbs is perfectly fine if you're able to pull something like that off. Yeah, absolutely. Again, yeah, we'll take a look at some of the loadouts that we've seen between the two teams here, and you can see just how close it was at the end of the day, coming down to just a, an 87-point margin between the two teams, ultimately. Lazarus just barely edging it out, thankfully, as Dust2 made their comeback just a little bit too late.
Just got to give you a little clap there for doing math on the fly. For doing math on the fly. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's not an easy thing. Um, but I, I swear, Lethal and I have been getting really good at it lately. <laughs> doing some like math mid-match, mid-rounds. Um, but yeah, a little bit of difference in terms of weaponry. But in the end, I don't think it was necessarily weapons that, that changed the way that game went. I think it was just the style and just the calls and the the understanding of where players were without the actual information being given and knowing how they're rotated and, and knowing like what positions they wanted to hit. Good positioning and then channeling that into individual plays as well. You had already think I think you talked about Lord Mono before, but I don't think it was just him. Uh, there was a pretty good effort from quite a few of the members of Lazarus there and being able to kind of have a few hero moments where they were able to pick up doubles, if not triples, um, and keep themselves just alive for that few extra seconds longer to buy time for teammates to come in and successfully trade out some more of those frags. See a lot of those scouts too for movement speed. We're we're really seeing a whole lot of usage of the scout as far as just I can tell. Movement. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think most people there. just pick it up just for the speed boost, essentially, along with the pants. They can do that too. There's just no point to you know sit back and try to go for the scope shots. Yeah, it's a lot of damage, but you need people on the points. You know, you need a body there to capture it. Just getting the elimination doesn't really matter in the end. Uh, but that's pretty much going to do it here for our match with Dust Two up against Lazarus. We still have Forza and Unbreakable on the other side of the bracket, which will be our next match coming up. I'm really curious to see how that match will go, considering those teams. Two teams I don't think have necessarily met just yet so far in the season. Um, and again, a lot of pressure on Unbreakable, who have been able to, to beat Lazarus, be able to beat Noble. And I want to say been able to beat Forza in the last cup. Uh, it's not the last cup, sorry, the last uh, season. So they need to be able to do that yet again, especially if they want to break through the top two. Again, just to reiterate, there's a 75-point difference between second and third place, and only top two goes and represents Europe and Brazil. Well, obviously the pressure is going to be on for that. Hopefully fours are able to hold themselves on and keep control of that and for their opponents, obviously looking to upset them a little bit here and kick them out of that top two position to hopefully push fours back a little bit further down in the rankings and leave some opportunities open for their opponents. That's the difficult thing about the way the cups work here, right, is that you need to have a good performance in every cup. If you perform really badly in one cup, you could potentially be knocked out of the top two. Um, but it's not one of those kind of formats where you can just do really well in like the last two cups and then expect to qualify. No, you have these people who are constantly getting these victories and, and constantly building up this point lead over and over again. Uh, you know, again, looking over to North America, it's a 25-point difference between first and second, which is exactly the same in Europe. But between second and third, it's only 35 points. Uh, instead of 75, and then third to fourth is 25. So it's just a, a big... Big discrepancy, I guess I should say. I was going to say big difference. That doesn't make any sense. Big discrepancy between the way NA and Europe have both been playing. Well, either way, if we can see uh, Elmans Pro push themselves into uh, you know third or fourth place here, they're probably going to get a pretty massive boost right now. So they only have 25 points overall out of the first two cups. Uh, so if they're able to push themselves into a solid position there, they're probably going to look at a pretty significant boost on the leaderboards as a result of that. Okay, well, we are going to head to a short break. When we come back, we'll be kicking off fours for some breakable. So don't go anywhere.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Guns of Boom Challenger Series for Season 2. We're into our Spring Cups as we're underway and getting to the final moments here of Cup number 3. I'm Jason Kappen, joined by Lethal. Nope, he's John Mullen. He's Bluecast. Not today. Hello. Not today. Just call me Lethal. <laughs> you know, there's actually a Halo player just called Lethal as well. Yeah, like, there you know? is. And he gets so mad when you mention it to him. Like, that's the true Lethal. And he's like, ha! <laughs> I've never seen him want to, want to uh, punch me more than I saw when that right that. So I do have to correct myself, by the way. Forza did get knocked out by Elements Pro Gaming. For some reason, I thought I saw it somewhere that they made it through to play against Unbreakable. So we now have Forza being knocked out before the semis, which means they don't get as many points. I think they get like 25. Um, and now are in, or I think they've 100% lost their first place because Laz just got the victory into the finals now. So now Forza's on the brink of being knocked down to where Dust2 was, but luckily since Dust2 got knocked out, they should be relatively fine for now. And with Unbreakable being so far down in fourth place, being 75 point difference between, yep, no, actually it was 85 between them and second place. Forza should maintain at least a top two, should maintain the second place, but that does scare things for them and does you know, give a little bit of ray of hope for the other teams who are trying to get through into the top two. It's obviously, it's obviously like a massive step down from their performance in previous weeks. And, yep. and you were talking about in the last segment how important it is to keep up a consistent performance. Uh, just for Because it it's only top two that qualify for the land slot, so you need to be remain pretty competitive because there is a pretty drastic point difference between the high placing and low placings. Uh, so considering that, uh, this is a pretty massive upset to allow for fours to get eliminated this early on. It's certainly going to hurt their chances uh, going into some of these future weeks. Hopefully not so much that they might get knocked out of the running, but it leaves the game open for another team if they can make a comeback in these later weeks to possibly swing it away for them. Sorry, I'm, just, I'm still enjoying just how much shorter on camera you are than me, <laughs> even though my chair's all the way down. Do I have to like, hold on, let me sit up straight, shoulders back, you know, there we go. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, slightly better. I just look like really robotic. You know, if it, if it makes you feel any better, I've, I've literally done events, I think I've told this before, um, I've had to do events where I was like at the desk and they would make everyone sit when I was on the desk, but when I was on the desk, they make everyone stand. <laughs> they just have enough boxes for everyone. <laughs> and then me sitting and everyone else standing would just look weird. So, you know. I've had to use Apple boxes before. It's not my fault. It's genetics, yeah. right? I was, I was born this way, I was born this height, born this <laughs> male, born white. Like, I can't <laughs> help that. And I get punished on air for it, you know? Yeah. I get punished because I'm too tall. Yeah. Not fair. Rough. Not fair. It rough. is rough life. Okay, so we'll be heading into our next match. Elements Pro Gaming. We got Cork, Hot Pepper, Max, and Macaronia. Macaronina. Macaronina. Ma Macaronina. Macaronina. Oh, that is so difficult to say. I got um, on the first try. What are you talking about? Because <laughs> you heard me say it like seven times. True. <laughs> True. All right, we're actually heading into that first map. Let's kick things off with Elements Pro Gaming up against Unbreak. We're going to find out if Unbreakable and Co. can make it through into the finals. Also, just want to point out, on actually, so they're not actually running Death Face on their side because he's uh, not going to be playing for them when it comes to Texas. That would be Nokia subbing in from Noble, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see how things go off here on Paradise Island. All right, well, starting things off, it is going to look like EPG move in for a quick opening cap. Obviously, they'll be more susceptible to damage as a result of that, but it's still actually a pretty solid cap. Unbreakable pretty much pull off the point entirely and try to go for a little bit of a flank, but it seems like that's worked brilliantly. They were able to cut off, looks like, pretty much the entire team from EPG and force them on to respawn here. Max, maybe the only one that survived, tries to hide in one of the side huts, and he gets pretty quickly taken care of as well. So... Nice little roundabout there from Unbreakable. Now they steal the point away. Problem is they let EPG get a lot of points off that cap, though, so they've got to hold it now in the post cap. I don't know if they're going to be able to here. Actually, Hot Pepper just lights things up here as he gets a triple elimination. Even maintains that lead, even though they don't have control of the point. But now Jiren playing from the side, going to go Ultra Instinct here, except he can't do that. Only Goku can, and Goku's not in this match because you know what? He's resting after saving the universe from the Tournament of Power, but I don't know why the hell I'm going off on this topic. 270 <laughs> points up against 200, because it's Dragon Ball Z. I know you don't watch the show. Oh, okay. I mean, I got it, but yeah. <laughs> Came out of left field with that one. Either yeah. way, we've got really EPG did. moving in for another recap here. We got the touchdown <laughs> from three-point line. <laughs> They're going to be able to steal away the cap on the main point here. At the same time, though, Unbreakable always seems to be just a few seconds away from trying to steal it themselves. And as such, they'll move in, take the decap. Should have the cap in a second. I don't think anyone from EPG is going to be able to get on to the point time to stop that. So they'll take it. But just as quickly, EPG is also working their way back over towards it. Just gets his head cleanly taken off there as he's trying to run away to a safer position. You see Bino trying to come in the nade, going to be hitting absolutely no one as Max is going to knife him up, slice and dice his way into a nice Benny Hanna's here. He's going to get a second one as well. Who ordered the chicken? Well, it wasn't 
<laughs> unbreakable at the moment. As Max is just continuing. Well, this man, don't even give him a gun. He just needs a knife. Nicely done, Max, there as well. Kind of a... Uh, Kind of was able to, to huddle himself behind this this pole in the middle too to throw off his opponent a little bit and leave the room open for him to get close enough for the Blade Master pick up there. So nicely done by him. Keep EPG finally with a solid lead here too. It had been pretty back and forth for the most part. They should need to give him a new name instead of Blade Master. Just give him Blade Sensei. <laughs> Gosh, does he know he has a gun? Like, come on, man. It's like Call of Duty days, just diving from like forever away. Going for those extra points, man. He's looking for the pickups. Either way, we've got Jiren here, unfortunately. We'll get the nade off. We'll see how much damage it's able to do in a second. Looks like not that much, unfortunately. Lord Beerus moving in here as well, trying to take out Max, but Quark comes in from the bottom and is going to be able to save his teammate's life and their control of this point. As like I said before, it's a lot more consistent here now for EPG. They very much forced Unbreakable off the point entirely, and it's been a good 30 or 40 seconds now since we've seen any real attempt from Unbreakable to get back onto the point. This may be the end of it right here if Unbreakable aren't able to push their way past right now. It's Thankfully, they just did that. So they may have barely bought themselves an opportunity to get back into this, but they can't mess up from this point forward, unfortunately. They might have. Court just gets himself a nice little double. He's on the point by himself. Should be able to take this in a second. No, he gets dropped actually from the side from Bino. He's not going to be up against three players. And he's going to get the first. He has a double. He gets a triple. Can he get the fourth as well? No, Max will shut him down. But Max might not be long for this world. He's going to be overrun by other players. But look at this. He's stalling for so much time nice. to split. Just go different directions around the totem pole, boys. So Max, once again, wasting a lot of time around that pole, trying to buy the time for his team to stop Unbreakable from completing the cap and moving themselves back into the lead. And they may have just done that. Max, the hero, is saving the day once again, pushes his team over the thousand point line. And with that, EPG Elements Pro Gaming take map number one of this series. You hate to see it. You know, you hate to see someone be able to dodge away from multiple players. But that comes down to communication, comes down to experience. Like in those, I don't think it would change the pace of the game, but I, I feel like a lot of those small moments, especially if they happen earlier on in the game can really mess you up. Just split, just go a different direction each. Mm -hmm. He can't run from both of you, and yet he stalled for like another three, four seconds to allow his teammates to get in there and to get a lot of damage in before they can, you know, get any good re amount of reinforcements. Kind of the heat of the moment thing, I suppose. There, are, Obviously, everything's happened relatively quickly in these games, so That's maybe true. not able to keep up with that. But props to Max, who did that more than once. Uh, I think we saw it at least on stream twice. We don't know if he ever uh, managed to do that you know, more times that we didn't catch on the camera there either. But some really good stuff for Max to be able to keep his team in control for as long as he did. Really bought the extra time as if he had not done that. Probably we're going to be looking at another like 10 to 15 seconds of control going to their opponent's direction. And that may have been enough for them to round the comeback. So Max may have really saved the day for his team right there. So we'll be going to our second map in just a moment's time. Uh, we got Elements Pro Gaming currently in 8th place. So There's joint 8th place or joint 7th place. Yeah, joint 7th is actually what it is as they have 25 points. But this big win can easily push them through almost into a top 4. I, I feel like they are, I think, maybe even 5th place they can actually comfortably get up to if they get a big victory here. You see Quark 251 points for himself and Jay with 218 and can win for the triple strike with the 10s. 10, 10, and 10. Oh, okay. You know, like bowling? Yeah. The strikes 10 pins. Mm -hmm. I get it. Your first roll. I got it. Took me a moment. I, I know you don't know much about sports, but... <laughs> <laughs> don't know much at all. <laughs> I know bowling. That's, oh, that's I, easy. And I'm not saying that to be mean to him. I'm saying that because in one of the shows we've done, he said a guy slam dunk from the three-point line, and he just threw it in. He didn't even <laughs> actually like Michael Jordan it in Space Jam. He physically did not have it in his hand as it went through the goal. So I was just... And then he alley-ooped to himself, which is technically is correct. You can do... But it wasn't really an alley-oop in that situation. I rest my case. So, you know, it's kind of like getting a touchdown while playing basketball. It's just not really possible. See the weapon loadouts here <laughs> as well as we swiftly move on from Sports. that topic. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's relatively the same here, once again, as we as we generally come to expect. A little bit of variance when it comes down to the first couple of kits. But especially when we get down to like shotguns and the snipers, uh, we'll generally see very similar loadouts. Can I ask something right blue? What's up? Why is it? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's good? What's why, why bowling out of all sports that exist in the world? Why bowling? Because I played it a bunch as a kid. Why? I don't know. Because it's easy. <laughs> it doesn't require much physical exertion for the most part. I mean, like the balls are pretty heavy. Yeah, but that's like, like that hurts me to like hold it up. That's like one part of the body you gotta use, right? You think you think something like soccer, football, as it would be called here, and <laughs> I was gonna make that correction. I'm just being safe, and that's like a full body exercise. You know, bowling is just like. At arm. That's it. But you need core strength. Suppose. Yeah, a little bit. Because you need to not move when you're... Yeah. <laughs> sort of. I that was, that's how it's I more, it's more. I feel like it's more technique than anything. I like to do the granny bowl. Because you have, the, you have like the, the oil patterns that's on the lane and stuff like that, too. 
I always slip normally when I try to be fancy. Because, like, the lanes are really slippery. And if How fancy are you trying to be where you slip? <laughs> if you overstep just, just by a centimeter since we're in Europe, like, you can fall. I have fallen before. Wow. Okay. It's actually part of some of my. I've done that like throws. once. What's what's it called? What's the, what when you when you like fall or when you go no. to the line? Like when you're when you're bowling. You know, like in baseball, you're pitching. Yeah, you bowl. While you're throwing, but what's like the? You bowl. It's called bowl. You, yeah, you bowl the ball. Like golf, you like I swing. Think. <laughs> like you swing. I've golf. actually never thought about that. Yeah. Right? Basketball, you shoot. What's it when you're bowling? It's bowl. So you're curling. No, you're bowling it. But why, is it, why does it have a special name? But you know it does not <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> that's why I like doing shows with you. We go off on tangent, but I feel like I enjoy it. There, everyone out there is probably like, talk about the game. All right, well, we're going to we'll talk do about that. it now as we're into the map. Like we said, Assault in the previous series it is going to be once again going over here to the factory, I believe, for our second one. And just like in our last series, it's also going to be TDM. So getting into it. EPG get themselves the first pickup. So far, they're actually flawless. Unbreakable's been unable to actually pick anything up, but that's going to change. Lord Beerus and Jiren both picking up kills there and are able to battle their way back into it. Unbreakable weren't really living up to her name, were they? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, had to take that one, right? Yep, I had to go for the easy one. Oh, nice little nade coming through. It's gonna land directly on a Beerus. There's actually be three players here as well to get a quick elimination, and yet they trade one for one. I don't know how. Lord Beerus already took initial damage, and he sat on top of their grenade like he was an Easter egg bunny, and, and yet he eventually picked up one elimination off the back. And now I'm gonna swing around the corner, and Hot Pepper comes up big again. That's a spicy play there as he gets a second. Should note that I think the players in this match are being way more passive than we were seeing in the Lazarus game where both teams were kind of willing to just throw themselves at each other. Um, Help you catch on. I, no, I completely missed that one. Hot Pepper, the spicy plays, he gets a oh, okay. double. I was, I was, I was distracted, with apologies. Just paying attention. It's fine, you're just one of those people who I cast with who just don't listen to me. <laughs> You wouldn't be the first, and you're not the last. Well, we've got Max once again <laughs> trying to hold himself in a... I'm trying to keep us on top here as he holds a solid position. More than anything, he's waiting for the respawn to come out. As unfortunately, his team got wiped a few moments ago, but quickly following that, he'll move in, gets himself two quick pickups. However, it's responded to in an incredibly fast affair by Unbreakable, who get, I think, three or four in a row without being contested by EPG. Nicely done by the Unbreakable roster there. Let's see, though. They actually ahead by five points, but five points isn't necessarily a good safety net to have, especially as we're on an old factory. So you see Hot Pepper Lizard come around the corner. They're actually trying to sit kind of close together so they can have a nice little exchange. But they're going to get the one point there. They have to be careful. A lot of this explosive damage can easily chip away at their health. Hot Pepper to take down one. And it's a lot slower style now here between the two once they realize the scores are getting a little bit out of hand. You know, let's see the peak coming from Hot Pepper around the corner. He's going to be ready to fend that off. Jay also in a good position to do some damage. Max really good at choosing when to kind of peel from these fights as well. Once again, he just barely escapes that situation. And as a result, he's going to keep himself alive. The same, unfortunately, can't be said for a lot of his teammates. Unbreakable are overall, I think, playing this a lot more passively and kind of falling back more efficiently than we're seeing from EPG. And with that being said, Unbreakable are just barely, just barely able to hold the lead and have been doing so for a good minute or so now. And both these teams kind of stalemated right now, not really able to make a consistent push against the other without risking too much here. Now, what I want to say there's like a legitimate chance it could, could come down to time, but again, just as slow as they were playing before, it quickly erupts into a lot of action here between the two. Again, only about 20 points between the two in terms of difference. And Break will still maintain the lead. Again, you can see how passive and how careful Quark has played, realizing any one of these eliminations can be the deciding factor of this map, and potentially the series here as Max takes down Lord Beerus. You know, there got sniped out as well a few moments ago by Quark, who's actually taking kind of a marksmanship role for the team right now. We saw we were looking at the weapons loadout earlier that he was using one of the more high-powered rifles instead of just taking the scout for the movement boost, where we're not seeing it used that much. Bino, I think, is doing something similar for his team up on top right now. And we can see Quark trying to flank around a little bit here. And in the meanwhile, Elements with that most recent pickup are going to be able to take the lead away from Unbreakable. It's remaining just so close here between these two teams. And that's why they're playing so passive, because they don't want to take a risk at this point. We'll see another one-for-one -one exchange. Players from EPG are going to be down to only two on the field at this point. But the same can be said for Unbreakable. Thankfully, respawns are quick. And now, look at this. Lord Beerus tries to make a big push, but Max again saves the day. Burns are still going to do a little bit of damage to him. Thankfully, he's got heals coming off right now in order to counter that out. And again, we stay just so close. Only a 30-point advantage for EPG. 
I see Jiren trying to look for some shots there off to the side here. A minute left to go in a break. We're going to have to make a move momentarily. Quirk has the opportunity to go for a big flank. He's actually going to peek. Potentially take a lot of damage, but luckily for him, he dodges out on the majority of it. 30 points between the two teams, and that's going to start to close here. Actually lengthen as Max gets a big elimination. Now 477 to 432. They only need nine, or 11 points now to close out this map, to close out this series. Can they do it, or can Unbreakable somehow come back? Oh, Jay's trying to make the play here now. He's going to be grouped up with Lord Beerus. In fact, it looks like most of them are grouped together. They can't really lose anyone at all in this push, though. Got to peek together. You Nicely do done. That. Two quick pickups from them, and they're bringing it back. Only a few points behind, but no. Hot Pepper steals one away. And with a one-point overflow, EPG take control yet again and close out the series. Two to nothing. Hot Pepper haul up in their business there, getting a couple of doubles with the explosive, and of course, getting the last elimination on the board as well. Well done by him and his team. Blue, you're shaking your head. What's wrong, man? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. Okay. Well, that is true. Nothing's wrong. And what? What was that? Sorry. What? Did you say something? No. No? Okay. I thought I, I thought I heard you whisper something. Nothing at all. Okay. Um, but we did see now Elements, a team who has not broken through into the top four before, now break through into the finals. They have a guaranteed minimum of a second place finish here. Fantastic job by them so far now. You can see Hot Pepper at 163 points up to Jay at 136. And you just saw the difference in styles, right? You saw... When Unbreakable had the lead, they played passive. And then instantly when Elements Pro Gaming got the lead, they immediately switched up their style, played passive, sat behind that forklift, and let Unbreakable come to them, which was almost really their downfall. Yeah, both teams was being incredibly cautious throughout that entire game because of how close it was. I mean, for a solid minute or two there, we were looking at teams only having like a five-point advantage or something like that. It was that close. Yeah. So, so, so it was really, and that explains why it was a lot more passive than the same map that we saw played out in our previous series. Obviously, we had a little bit more of a lead there, so teams were willing to take more risks uh, in order to try and either come back or push their lead further. This time it was obviously a little bit more timid. Even coming down to the wire there, you can see just you know 30 or 20 points or so difference between the two of them at the end of the day. So both teams choosing to not really want to take risks as much as we saw in the previous matchup, leading to a little bit of a slower game. Yeah, but I don't think anything's wrong with slow. It's actually kind of no, nice. It's kind of refreshing, you know. I, I yeah, considering like how quick and how action packed a lot of these modes are, and you get to certain TDM maps where it's just like, all right, let's just kind of play the time here. Let's play a little bit slower. We see you know a decent amount of that on skyscrapers, which will be one of our best of five maps, which will be coming up now with our third place and our finals game. And I kind of like that slow style, you know. I mean, I was kind of really questioning there for a second, where they went for like a wide peak. There was like two players on, on elements who went for like a wide peak. Um, one initially went for the shot, and then he backed off, and then his teammate went for the wide peak himself. And it was kind of like, well, like where's the communication to like peak or not yeah. peak? If you're gonna commit to that to that peak, you need to commit to get together. And they actually did lose both players uh, eventually from that one. So like little mistakes like that when it comes to TDM, when it comes to how close you know, the score lines can be, can cost you the entire map and cost you a series. And oftentimes, just because of how, you know, again, how short the round timers are in this in this game as well, it, it often comes down to those one or two small mistakes. We were talking about in the last series about how one or two adjustments, especially in the objective focus modes like King of the Hill and Capture Point, uh, uh, like one small adjustment can oftentimes make the difference for a team and allow them to either cut ahead or completely fall behind in a matchup. And we see that similarly here in Deathmatch where, you know, an over peak or uh, a wrong opportunity that's that's used to push, which leads to a team wipe or something like that, can completely mess up a team throughout the rest of that match. All right, well, Blue, we do have to head to a short break yet again, but when we come back, it's going to be unbreakable up against Dust2 here in our third place game, and we'll see you guys in a few.
Welcome back, everyone, to some more Guns of Boom action for the Spring Challenger Series. We're into Season 2. He's blue. I'm Jason. Yabadi. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just came off the top of my head. Uh, fly with that one. Yeah, uh, that wasn't that great, uh, unfortunately. But flow was working all right, I'm going to be honest. But you should have kept it going, see where that went, you know? It, yeah, the thing is, I know where it could have went, and it was never going to be any better than where it was there. So I just decided to just stop there and just cut it short. You know, just let it go short, just like uh, that's fair. Say next to me. So we're getting away with our third <laughs> place <laughs> match in just a few moments. Unbreakable <laughs> being knocked down to third place. They did lose to Elements, but their opponents dust too. Going to be uh, battling out for that third place finish. And of course, the extra points and the extra money on top of things here. And we will be moving into a best of five now. So we'll have Farming Complex, Military Warehouse, Wild West Saloon, Skyscrapers, and Atrium. We do need those fourth and fifth maps. And that, of course, still sets up our grand final, which is going to be coming up after this match, of course. And that'll be between Lazarus and this new challenger, Elements Pro Gaming, who up to this point had only been holding a seventh place position, tied for seventh place with one other team in the rankings. That's certainly going to change, having made it to the final. And we'll see if they can continue their path of destruction here and see if they can knock out Lazarus as well. I, you know, I'm going to go into that finals match as like Lazarus taking it 3-0 in my head just because Lazarus have been top two, now three cups in a row, and Elements finally breaking through into this. Yeah. I feel like Lazarus should be the better team. But then again, Lazarus did struggle against Dust2. Not to say Dust2 is not a good team at all, but there's definitely some, like, like gaping mistakes going on within their team of like not adapting their styles on certain uh, certain maps. But that'll be our final match of the day before we do get underway with our quick little podcast after the show. Remember, we'll be doing that after the European-only shows. So every two weeks starting this week, Yep, we'll be doing that yep. when we don't have the North American show to cover. But going to this third place match, interesting to see that um, that we have Deathface no longer playing for Unbreakable. Um, he's not playing in Texas with the team as Noka is going to be filling in from Noble. Um, I was actually expecting him to still use him because then maybe like for Brazil if they qualify or yeah. keep using him, you know, for the qualifier for Brazil's. But they've actually just like swapped him out. I'm not sure exactly why or what the decision was. Maybe he can't play this week. That's obviously a, a possibility. Um, I'm curious to see how that does like adapt or does um, you know flush itself out in the next few weeks. Yeah, obviously, again, we're going to be seeing with, with the increased price point and everything like that, there, there's going to be adjustments to the rosters being made. I think uh, overall for these teams to be able to possibly compete at all these international events and whatnot, so I think teams are looking to kind of optimize their rosters for that, and we'll, we'll see how, if, if this ends up being a permanent change or something that they're just trying to shift temporarily, of course. Yeah, I'm curious to see how actually they do with Nokia on the team. I mean, obviously a fantastic player, but you have to take into account the style of the team, the way they like to play, the way they like to communicate, the way they like to lead. Obviously, he's done well with in Noble since they did win Gods of Boom uh, just a few weeks ago. I think just like just over a month ago. Yeah. Oh, where was this? Uh, sorry. <laughs> I, told you. I seem to always cast people who don't like to listen to me when I, when I commentate, when I talk. Um, talking about how you know Nokia and Noble, when they did win the Gods of Boom tournament just uh, just about a month ago. Okay, yeah. So the, the Gods of Boom event. My apologies for that. <laughs> I was looking at our admins doing stuff on our middle monitor. It's fine. I deserved it after the he's blue, I'm Jason, yabba dee, yabba die. And then you call me short for like the fourth time on broadcast. <laughs> I mean, look at the look at the screen. Like I can't help it. My I'm barely just, sitting straight. How much further help does this chair go? Hold on. Oh, that's the end of it. Okay. <laughs> It's it's really bad when you when you put your head down too because you can just see how much further up my chair has gotten compared to <laughs> oh here. My let's just uh, let's wait. Let's do one of these. It's like three or four inches taller, my chair. <laughs> I'm not even. How, how tall are you? In uh, like six foot six, basically. Okay, so you're like almost a foot taller than me then, because I'm like five foot nine. <laughs> but uh, but on but on Tinder you're six foot. <laughs> Sorry, that's just a lame joke. Um, so when we get into this one in a few seconds, I think just waiting for the teams to be all ready and, and all good to go. North America is still going on at the same time as this one is, but we'll not be covering it today. I actually don't know why we don't cover North America. Um, but it's nice that we have this little like podcast thing now to fill in the time. Mm -hmm. um, quick question, by the way. What's up? Since we since we're still waiting for the game. Um, so if a tall per okay, if a short person asks a tall person to grab something from up high. It's like normal, right? It's like, okay, yeah, I can grab it for you. But if a tall person asks a short person to pick something up off the ground for them, it's insulting, right? Yeah. Why? Because cause you could still do that on your own. I yeah, suppose. but like a short person could like just climb up on something or grab a chair or something. Yeah, but like... I have to bend down if really If far. we're assuming this is like at a grocery store, right? Like... Okay, all like right. There's not going to be just ladders laying around. But you can climb on the different levels of the... I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna climb on the shelves. You're gonna, you're gonna tell me you're not gonna see like these Reese's Puff cereal on the high side and be like, I, 
You know, I'm just not going to get it. I'm not. So, so first of all, let's clarify. I'm not that short where I've, where I've had this problem. <laughs> I just want to get that out of the way. First You're at Costco where they stack stuff really high. If I have to, I jump. Or just like jump and you, like you slap it. You potentially knock stuff like, yeah. over, like stuff in the aisle. Yeah, basically. I mean, I'll fix it though. Like, no, like the whole like thing can fall over. All right. Well, I mean, you're you're going pretty drastic with this. At most, you're looking at like three or four items that are going to be lined up. But like you're, old. but you're like closer to the, like you can easily pick it up quicker than me. It's more efficient, right? Yeah, but <laughs> the difference is that the tall person can like physically do something that the short person can't. So what if like, what if I could not bend over? What if like I was on crutches or like? Okay, I then had... that, that's obviously like different. But then would you still case. ask me to get something from a pie for you? Probably. I mean, if it like was obvious it was going to strain you, then no. But see, so where do you consider it to be? From from America? <laughs> Listen, I'm American myself. But, I was about you know? to say like you're also from America. It's good. To, it's good to, yeah, I'm I'm basically like half European now though. That's true. You've lived here for quite a few years now. Almost right? seven. Yeah. Almost it's seven. It's been a while. July. July tw- 12th or 16th? 16th, there'll be seven. I've lived in the U.S. my whole life, so proud American. Let's not get into that because we're uh, only doing the European. I'm not sure what's going on with the uh, with the lobby. There's a good chance I might just send it to a break here unless it all does get fixed. It has been fixed. Okay, so we don't need to do that. We're about to get underway with this game. It's waiting for all the players to read up as we're obviously talking nonsense here, but that's what's going to happen when we uh, you know have to wait for the for the lobby to get set up yep. and, and ready to go. It's looking like we're pretty much ready to go. They're just waiting on a few of the players to ready up, and then we should be good to jump into the game. Quick reminder, this is the third place match, playing for points primarily at this point. Um, and then on top of that, we're going to be going to our grand final following this match, both of which are best of fives, of course, so we'll be a little bit longer than the previous two yeah. matches that we've had played. What's up? So if I raise my chair as high as his... <laughs> <laughs> See, now this... <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna go down here, guys. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, while you're done, can you pick up my pen? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I thought you already picked, you already picked it up. <laughs> Let's just leave it like this. See, you would have did it. It wasn't insulting, apparently. <laughs> you're no, because I'm crazy. down here now. Exactly. <laughs> you're, you're seated though. It's different if you're sitting. Point proven and point for Jason. Let's you literally just, just did that to prove a point. <laughs> Oh my gosh, when I'm all the way down, you're like under the desk. You're like legitimately under the desk. Let's fix this, so. <laughs> so the and even <laughs> even with your chair all the way up, you're just still not even close. It's not all the way up yet. Hold on. Oh, wait, it was. <laughs> <laughs> the game is ready. Enough of the height differences. Let's go for some guns and boom. Into the game. Oh. Thank you, production. Oh, this, is why I, this is why I like casting with you. All right. Time. all right, so getting into it. <laughs> Jesus. Same before we're not, we're both not going to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it is going to be capture point. And obviously we'll have a little bit of a skirmish between the two teams to start things off. B, the central point, however, is going to go over towards Unbreakable to start off the match, but it seems they ignored their side point. The same can be said for Dust2, however. Both teams are now going to go over their prospective side points, but Dust2 is going to attempt to steal away the midpoint in the process. Very close to getting it. The spleen's been left alone. Doron comes in at the last second. Is going to try to trade it out, but no more reinforcements. Also still here from Unbreakable. And it looks like uh, still no real winner out of this one. The spawns are allowing for teams to constantly funnel in, and as a result, no one's been able to take consistent control of B just yet. And there's B being captured finally. But the thing is, A's been lost in the meantime. C's being lost out as well. It seems like both the teams had decided, all right, let's just ignore B for now. Let's just start taking these other points away from them because it's just too it's just too hot. There's too much action happening at the B position, which is still going to be under attack here from both teams. Maybe the sling come in and clean things up here. Maybe turn himself into the kidney and try to allow them to take the point because kidney's clean. I got it. I'm with you. Either way, solid holds coming in right now from Unbreakables. They try to push themselves ahead. They are probably going to end up losing C, but should be able to rally together to take B. Now, it's going to continue to come under pressure, so they may not keep it for a very long time. But as long as their spawns are able to rally over here quickly enough, they might still have a chance to save it. No, oh, the Spleen doing some good work there. He is going to end up taking a lot of damage from the Fire Dot and end up going down as a result of that. And as such, we'll see Dust2 continue to move in. Probably steal away control of this as they will work towards a comeback here. And they should get it in just a few seconds. They're only about 10 points behind Unbreakable now. There's a lot of nade damage being done. Like, honestly, it's just constant nades being left and right, like, directly to the chest. Uh, time and time again, you can see Jay. He's like, all right, I, I, don't, I don't want this fight. I don't want this. I'm just going to run away. And it looks like it's going to allow the, uh, the guy who's fighting up against to survive for a little bit longer as he's going to come in and take down our mace. But it's just been constant action between the teams. Like, the score difference isn't big at all. It's about 40 points now. But we've been constantly hearing, just, you know, if you're listening to the game, just enemy capture the point. 
at this point lost. Just non-stop action between the teams. No one really able to just settle in and get comfortable. Yeah, I mean, B specifically, I mean, really every point except C, to be honest, has been constantly changing hands here for the most part. So it's a miracle that Dust2 have been able to keep up as that is their hope point. C, in the meanwhile, has remained under the control of Unbreakable for pretty much this entire map so far, except for maybe one or two back half attempts from Dust2 here. It looks like, however, Dust2 are able to get a little bit more self-control for the first time in a while. Maybe not, though. J picks up a nice double for himself, and he is going to be able to possibly oh, he's decap. Pitzer. Yeah, he gets cut off by two different players, but this does allow for Unbreakable to push pretty aggressively into B, so they have a chance to steal that away now. Or not. Oh, Sojo comes in, Spleen as well. A's being lost in the meantime, but they should have control of two. I thought they would have control of two. Spleen's gonna come in, now they get the pincer yet again onto Lord Beerus. He's not gonna survive. If they can maintain B, they're finally gonna have a two to one and get, well now just less than 100 points away from picking up this first map here. Dust too have been able to bid, pick up a massive lead out of nowhere, it seems like almost about 300 points and they're just about gonna close this one off and they've done it. They pick up the first map here in the series. Solid win from Dust too there. It seemed like every single firefight was going in their direction as we got towards the end of the match. And you can see that slight lead in the fragging department coming in for them as well. We can see probably a few more of those individual statistics in just a second, but ultimately, oh, wow. So it was like 200, was that 260 points for the number one player from Dust? I didn't see who it was. I think it's the points. Like number one was like 150 for Unbreakable. Like mm. that's, that's a massive difference between the two. And I think we're actually, yeah, like I said, we're going to catch out a little bit more of the stats in a second as you get them on screen. But that's, uh, that's not a good start. But again, it was like a 30, 40 point game for, I want to feel like, like the first 80% of the match. And then out of nowhere, Dust2 were able to get two and just able to maintain it and just completely just walk over them. It's 248 to 150. Look at that. That's insane. Yeah, pretty massive difference. And it's it unfortunately just seemed like Unbreakable just kind of lost the plot in terms of how they were able to win some of these firefights. Dust2 is constantly coming out on top of even outnumbered engagements there for a few moments as well. Dust2 was really cutting ahead as a result of that. And just, as you mentioned, constantly were holding this two cap that they had on their home point and the central point, which for some reason their opponents just couldn't seem to breach past, especially in the late game situation there after it had been going back and forth for pretty much the entire game up until that point. I'm not able to breach past it, maybe, you know, drone in, you'll be able to see, you know, where the enemies are, and you can use that to your advantage with the information. Um, but unfortunately, it didn't work out here. Are we going on now? <laughs> you know. But yeah, unfortunately, I know. It didn't work out for Unbreakable. A little bit more of a discrepancy in terms of weaponry between the two teams. But again, I don't think it was one down to weaponry. It was just down to, like, having the positioning, having the amount of players where you need them at the right times to be able to pull off some, some really good positions and some really good eliminations you needed to close out these points because that that middle point of b was just constantly being fought over for such a, a long point of the game and it looks like again dust two taking the same round as before where they're kind of ignoring the sniper for the most part just taking the scouts primarily for the speed boost and the probably situational use of it jiren did choose to pick it up for their opponent team for unbreakable side of things so we'll probably be seeing a little bit more sniping action coming out from him but his other three teammates also again taking the scout primarily for that speed boost yeah, to get back to the middle point, like 100%, you saw yeah. right there. Like they Keep rushing it, boys. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, it eventually worked out for Dust 2, and that comes down to just, like, saw, saw small, minute little things of getting, like, a, a 2v1 or like getting the focus fired down at the right time. Um, killing that player just, like, even half a second quicker means that's half a second he's not doing damage, which means you're going to survive a half a second longer, potentially, and eventually it just snowballed in their favor. We're going to our next map. It will be Military Warehouse. We're going over some team deathmatch here, and this is definitely one of, like, the slower paced maps as we go on to deathmatch and we go into this mode i'm curious to see how these two teams are going to go about it because we've seen i don't know i feel like um actually i can't even say because these teams really haven't really played against each other too much i'm, I'm trying to think like who would be favored in this and i would i would i would have said unbreakable in terms of like aim and stuff but honestly i, I still don't i still don't know i'm not convinced necessarily that dust 2 is going to be the better team in the series i think that was just like um just like down to how that middle point turned out in the last map I would say that if Dust2 comes out convincingly with this one here, I'd say it's a pretty safe 3-0 for them. Because uh, just if you look at it from like the fragging department, that would be a pretty damning assertion at that point that they just have uh, the better skills when it comes to being able to take firefights compared to Unbreakable. Uh, so I think going into a third map, regardless of what a, of what actual uh, map it's going to end up being on, uh, they'll be able to kind of take it just because they're winning so many more fights in the day. If they're able to do that at the end of the last map, like we saw in the capture point, and then if they're able to do it again in this upcoming map, which is going to be TDM, if I recall correctly. Yeah, so so we have control, TDM, cough, TDM. So 
I mean, there's there's two maps which is just all out brawls and objectives. Mm -hmm. There's two maps where there's going to be an objective you have to fight over. So I I don't know. I'm curious to see if like one team is definitely going to favor the other. It seemed like Dust Two in general, even when we looked at the Lazarus match, were better when it came to the objective games, like the King of the Hill and Paradise Island. They were playing a lot of these angles to the side on the staircase, the long staircase to actually get really damage in. They were playing the objective game a lot cleaner uh, than their opponents. But maybe this run breakable is going to step up. Maybe TDM is going to be their style. The problem is. If we do go five maps, Atrium's going to be the last map, and that's going to be Control, so it's not going to be just a frag-heavy kind of game that you can play. So basically, it's coming down to Unbreakable to try to bring this back and bring this back a little bit of a quicker fashion and try to take at least one of these objective-based game modes away from their opponents on Dust2, which do seem to favor those modes a little bit more. So it plays into their favor a little bit just in the overall Best of Five series, but like I was saying before, their fragging power in the last map was definitely something to be admired. So going into the second one, it is going to put uh, Dust, or excuse me, it is going to put Unbreakable in the hot seat as Dust2 are looking pretty consistent coming off that first map. Yeah, and again, both these two teams, you have... Uh, Dust2 currently in third place, at least before the results from this cup in particular, 75, and Breakable in fourth at 65. So they're both technically fighting for like that third place position still. Dust2 trying to maintain it, Unbreakable trying to take it away from them. And then obviously both teams trying to claw up into that second place where currently fours are being knocked out before the semis. is going to see a massive drop in terms of the difference they have between themselves and that third place position. But here we go, kick things off now as we get back onto Military Warehouse. Dust2 up against Unbreakable. And the guys on four certainly won't be happy about their results today as they got to sit back and watch these last two matches now, try to find a way to come back. The Spleen walking into an, some unfortunate circumstances there to start the match off. And so far, the trades all favoring Unbreakable in that respect. Nicely done by them, keeping their guys together in a big group for the most part and bringing it all basically down to Armace on the field right now. Tries to heal himself, but he's so low, he just gets picked off by Lord Beerus a few seconds after going into the open. Sergio gets a nice little rush through his Jiren, trying to nade him out. Lord Beerus eventually going to fall as well. Sergio gets himself a nice double here. But the snipe's coming from Bino. Let's help maintain this lead. They're up by 34 points. He's eventually going to be run over. Again, having the wrong weapon for the wrong, wrong situation. And it cost him his life here. And obviously closes his difference a little bit further. Nice little flank comes through. And look at that. Sergio gets on a streak very quickly. There's Spleen as well. That's like three quick eliminations. Only Bino left alive as he did die a little bit earlier on. And now Dust2 have the lead. They can play a little bit more passive. Oh, they could have. Nice. nice shot coming out from Bino there to take out Doran. And now Unbreakable are going to continue to hold about a 30-point lead here. Spleen and Arme is trying to make a push, but Jiren takes the high ground, gets incredibly aggressive over to the top of them. Just a one-for-one -one exchange, though. Spleen will take damage from the fire dot. Instantly triggers his heal to try and counter that back out. Beerus also going to come under pressure here as shots come out from both of the members of Dust2 that are pushing him. And with that, Frag, Dust2 are going to be able to push themselves into the lead. Bino, though, continuing to pick players off with the sniper, doing a fantastic job. A nice adjustment from Bino as well to catch the Spleen hiding in the corner there. He's going to get more off of this, actually. I mean, they have the lead. They don't need to continue to push up, and yet, looks like he wants to either reset him. Ooh, or just get more eliminations. Takes on Armace. Might get another one on top of this, but the spleen going to be a little bit too quick and help take this lead back down to sub-20 points. What a very slow, broiling match that we've seen in some of our previous TDM games earlier on in the event here. Voron gets a nice side angle, and his other teammate, Spleen, is able to push forward, get some damage as well. Problem is, trades again. Show up from Unbreakable just a couple of seconds later. Jay and Bino both picking up responses to that. It all goes a little bit more passive here now. I guess I don't think Dust going to let them continue to play passive here. Nice little nade comes off, catches onto two, but again, it's not going to convert into any eliminations, at least at the moment. Jiren gets a nice double. He's going to eventually fall from behind from Doran. And it's still only a 13-point difference between the two. But again, I'm wondering if we're going to hit that point of the map where just all of a sudden one team is just going to completely climb ahead in terms of points. But I'd imagine with no actual objective to fight over, there's no real possibility of that. If they, can, if they can start staggering spawns, for the most part when teams have gone down, they've been wiped pretty decisively. So if they can start oh, to stagger no. spawns or something like that, that might be a way to do it. But nicely done by Unbreakable. That just cost, I think, the map right there. The spleen mm -hmm. going in with the knives missing. Unable to take it down. Then he gets flanked. They actually lose two players without getting a single elimination themselves. Down just oh. under 40 Ooh. points. And that's going to climb to now above 50. A lot more sniper work coming into play in this match compared to some of our previous other ones, specifically from Bino. Been showing up with that rifle, absolutely dominating on it. And then in the meanwhile, though, Unbreakable still holds the lead. It's gotten a little bit less impressive over the past few moments. Lord Beerus is barely able to survive that skirmish, however. So he brings himself back into the fold. And now, Dust2 are going to be kind of in the hot seat here. Slowly bringing it back. Only 30 points behind here. Oh, nice. They've switched to a more passive style. And there you go. They're right back into it. And only eight points behind Unbreakable. Ah. 
And the Armist knew he's gonna fall from the burn damage, so he went in for elimination. It's gonna come down to about two more kills here from Break to close us out. And now if you're Dust2, you have to play carefully. You need to go in together. You need to get not get caught off guard and not get caught in a bad situation. You need to have the man advantage every time Nade goes through yet again. You see Sergio trying to hold this position, trying to use that little ramp to his advantage here with the high ground. He's being naded out constantly. Armis comes in. He's gonna come down to these last few frags. 473 to 486. It'll very much come down to the next kill or two. Everyone uh -oh. getting incredibly That's passive. Fortunate. And at the end of the day, yeah, it's a member from Unbreakable that catches a member of Dust 2 hiding in the mid shed off of that Unbreakable. Take a map number two. The series will be tied up now at one to one. Unfortunate that just came down to that position. If he didn't get caught there, who knows what happened? They were within striking distance of taking that game. But a good little turn right there to realize, hey, there's a person in the shed. I should probably just yeah. finish them off. Probably and just shoot him. Get us. The thing is, you saw him trying to run away. He realized he couldn't take the fight since he didn't get the first shot. Um, it's the time to kill is relatively quick. Whoever hits that first shot with the level of play that we're seeing is generally going to win out on that exchange. Let's just see another player kind of fly in out of nowhere. So Unbreakable fight back, and now that's a good sign. Because now we're going to see a minimum of a fourth map, and that fourth map will be TDM. So if it kind of, you know, history plays true, we could potentially be seeing a 2-2 scoreline going into that fifth and final map. And again, Sergio and Jay leading the teams. Much closer this time when it comes to the overall scoreline than we saw Dust 2's leading player, Sergio, I believe it was in the last map as well, getting a much bigger lead, at least when it came to the score department. It was almost double what Jay had in the previous match. This time, it's a little bit closer with only a 30-point score difference in between the two players. Yeah, it was like 100 points. Yeah. I think it was. It was like 248 to like 150. It was, it was, almost, it was almost double, something like that. It was, very, it was a really massive difference. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Almost double. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll take a look again. It's, <laughs> it's like I'm almost double your height. Oh my god, that's it. <laughs> I just, I just don't. The problem, problem with the height remarks. I just don't ever reply to it. Like, because if we're talking on the same thing, I just, like, you just beat me. Like, it's true. I, I got nothing to say. <laughs> it's unfortunate. I mean, yeah, but your comeback is like, yeah, but at least on flights, you know, I don't have a problem with my legs. Yeah, but that's like mean. Like, how's that mean? That's like a. That's Isn't like a, me saying I'm taller than you mean? That's that's like a struggle. I I mean, yeah, but like the amount of times I brought it up, I feel like that's being mean. So I feel like you're allowed to. Possibly, very true. Maybe just you. Maybe you're just not a mean person. Maybe you know where it is mean the Wild West Saloon here as we nice. kick things off. And we'll be getting into it, folks. <laughs> Obviously, again, since it's our third map, the game mode will be changing as well. It's King of the Hill for this one. Anybody that's played games out there should like Sheriff of the Hill. All right. Well done. And we'll see Dust2 <laughs> try to get initial control. A lot of spawns coming in from Unbreakable, though. So they are going to be able to stop this cap attempt and more than likely steal it away. Quite proud of that one, actually. I'm not going to lie. I'm actually pretty impressed with that. Came off the top of my head. I've definitely not been planning that for a week ever since the last show. <laughs> definitely not. But again, King of the Hill can be really, really similar to what we had at Control, where we had both teams just duking out constantly for that one point in middle. And then we saw Dust2 just take a mass lead, but look at this. Again, the point difference isn't that big. Neither team's been able to get the cap. It's finally a breakable comes through and gets it, but for how long does he see the lead still be maintained by Unbreakable? Our Mace, okay, he's not going to be pushed from the high ground. Nice little nade comes in to help keep them away, help keep that pressure off for now, but it's going to come down to a lot of battle of the high ground control. And I feel like if you're on high ground, you're actually at a major disadvantage because so many people can shoot you from the low ground. It's a shotgun derby right now, it seems to be the case. Dornon's going to change that up a little bit with some usage of the rifle. But ultimately, he is also going to end up getting knocked out there a few seconds later, it seems, too. I thought duels in the Wild Wild West were with, uh, you know, pistols, not shotguns. I mean, you could make an argument for the uh, the Winchesters, like the, the the lever the lever guns, yeah. maybe? Like you, you get at carnivals when you're... Those, those were, like, kind of shotguns, so... But it was, like, I mean, the closest, yeah. it was like the closest thing you had to... Yeah, you're not gun. wrong. You're not wrong. Back in that time. Like it, was, it wasn't shoot out multiple pellets, but you had to, like, you know, like, cock the gun every shot. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, closest thing you had. Ultimately, though, it's still going in really back and forth between so, the like, two teams Like, would a musket here. be close to a shotgun, then? No, not at all. It's like, there's way too much reload time on a musket. But you have to reload it after every shot. Yeah, but it takes, like, 20 seconds to reload it. So. <laughs> well, with that attitude. <laughs> and isn't a bow and arrow a shotgun? All right. 
now we're stretching it. Here we are. 600 points just about here for Dust2. Up against the 503 out of Unbreakable. Unbreakable's most recent cap, though, seems to really brought them back into the game. Dust2 had nearly a 200-point lead just a few moments ago, and it seems to have devolved very quickly with Unbreakable getting the most recent cap. Once again, good positioning, really allowing them to take solid control of just the central portion of the map around the hill as well, has really allowed for them to battle back into this quite efficiently. However, that might be changing now. Armace, as he done, snipes out Jiren, gets rid of the last bastion of defense here for Unbreakable. A few of their respawns going to be moving in now, trying to take the high ground, but Armace sees that rolling in from a mile away. Sergio will unfortunately go down to the dot, but besides that, not really taking any losses here. Now, this is just like what we saw on uh, control with Farming Complex. Now they have the point, they have good control, they backed away. They're just completely running away with this lead. 200 points now and seeming to grow as the time does go on here. They're getting the trades, they're maintaining control, and I think we're going to have them be able to pick up this map and go up 2-1 to one now. Very much looking like the case, especially if things don't change here soon for Unbreakable Jiren again. Up on the top balcony, trying to make a push for himself, but it has to dive onto the point. They need to stop the cap from happening now, and unfortunately it just doesn't seem like it's going to be possible. Armace tries to try to hold it for a few more seconds here. The decap does come in, but it does not matter. One or two more pickups will settle it for Dust2 Esports. They take map number three and take the lead at two to one. Only one more away from taking this third place match and getting the superior point total for this week 300 points a lot <laughs> yeah you're not wrong two players on the side dust two had a, a cumulative of 500 points wow that's a lot of points it was really it was just those I'm, it was those two players that were just holding on in mid the entire time too and kind of just holding ground for the rest of their teammates while while they kind of tried to do flanks relatively unsuccessfully but there's nothing against that and again look at this massive score difference between the leaders yeah. on either team it's different this time it's arm ace who was one of those two players that was holding on the point and Bino from the other side but look at the difference almost a little over a hundred points in fact between the two of them with uh 300 points going over to arm ace but arm ace uh, I don't. I didn't see who the second player was at the top of my head. Um, but for them too to have like half the points they need total to win the map, that's that's pretty ridiculous. And that really shows how well they stood out. And and the thing is, we are, I was gonna say we made fun of, but it was me. It wasn't Lethal who made fun of our mace because he was talking in Discord, saying, "Make sure to spectate me. I want everyone to see me." And then the map that he played right after that, he just got absolutely wrecked and did nothing. But he did show up there 100, percent 300 points for himself and great awareness, as you were mentioning before, as they took the point. He backed away, saw them come on the higher ground. He's like, "All right." Easy eliminations for me. I'm going to take those and just run away again with another objective-oriented game mode. But we're going on a TDM now. We're going back onto just raw fragging power, and that's when Breakable were able to pick up their one map. It was very, very close, however. Obviously, the much closer match out of the three that we've played so far. So I wouldn't necessarily say it's a surefire thing that Unbreakable are going to be able to take it again. In fact, it's very likely that Dusku can steal this away. It came down to positioning, as you were mentioning, at the end of the day in that last TDM map that we ended up playing out there just because it was so close. So down to the wire, basically came down to one or two kills between either team. So if we end up in that situation again, still an opportunity for Dust2 to close it out here. 3-1 instead of going to the fully loaded series at 2-2 and our final map. So Skyscraper, I think this is going to be a map we potentially could hit the time limit on. If you're unfamiliar, it's definitely a slower slower style map. There's a lot of long angles you need to be able to hold successfully um, to really punish teams from taking positions around the map. I believe we actually have already loaded in, so this will be hopping in just a few seconds. If I were to put you on the spot here, Blue, do you think we're going to see that 3-1 scoreline, or do you think we're going to see a 2-2 now? I think they got it now. I think I think, uh, I think think we're going to be looking at the Dust 2 guys taking this one. They had a pretty massive lead in the last map, so I think momentum swings in their favor. Let's find out, though, as they are sticking together in just one massive unit, try and push themselves in to their opponents at the start of this match. And so far, that's worked pretty well. Yeah, look at that. They've actually been able to get, I think, five eliminations, only losing on one. Spleen and Doran are eventually going to fall, but they still have the lead nonetheless, and they are the ones who can dictate the pace. Or will they do that? I don't know. They're actually still pushing up aggressively. They're not letting Unbreakable come to them. They're still taking a fight to the other team, and that could be a potential mistake for them, but they do come out ahead with the two for one, now the three for two. So still going to keep this lead growing, but that's that's still very scary considering like you have the lead, you don't need to be the ones to be aggressive, uh, especially when you already lost TDM the last time you played them on Military Warehouse. I think more than anything, they're just trying to take the initiative here and make sure that they come out on top of the trades, but it doesn't seem like that's the case. In fact, quite a few of their respawns from Dust2 are just getting picked off across the map right now. Sergio being the most recent one of them right there. The, the guys on a break have done a really good job of just splitting up Dust2. And you can see they're trying to get back together in just one big group. That's not going to be the easiest thing in the world. They do manage to scrape it back together, though. Reestablish about a 90-point lead over Unbreakable, so it's not the end of the world just yet. But they've got to be careful, because it seems like it's going to be the goal for Unbreakable for the rest of this map. Yeah, look at that. I mean, with the 100-point difference, practically, they have to make the move. I'm surprised to still, still see Dust2 pushing up. 
Like, you're just giving them potential to get easy eliminations. That's three for one trade. You had almost a hundred point difference. You just gave them a four for one trade and you took your hundred point difference to drop it to about 30. Like that's that's a massive mistake. I feel like like top teams would not allow to happen, especially on this map when you know it plays so much slower than the rest of the TDMs or it should when you have elites. A couple of really hard choke points these players have to work with on this map. I think that's why it ends up playing a little bit slower. Well, they come, sorry, they come back with a four for one. So now they almost have the hundred point difference again. So, you know, forget everything I just said, Blue. Listen, it's like the fourth time they attempted it, to be fair. So your point's not completely hollow. Finally ended up working out for them to be able to put. But the thing is, when it does work, it pushes them ahead so much further. And that's the big deal that comes out of it. Nice double pickup that comes in from Lord Beers and Deer. And they're both using the rockets to get themselves into it. Our mace as well. Very low. And we'll probably go down to the dot. In fact, it looks like that's the case. But still, not enough to make a real impact on this scoreline. 80 points ahead, however. Dust 2 is still going to be over unbreakable. All right. So now they seem to maybe slow things down. Trying to take some control here. Or towards the outside mid position. They do get the exchange there. You can see Spleen is burning. He's eventually going to be finished off. And Armace gets a double here with the RPG coming through. Jiren will finish him off, but either way, they do have that 100-point lead, and it's starting to grow a little bit bigger here. They need 100 more to close out this map and the series and guarantee themselves that third-place finish. Looks like that's going to continue to be the case. A massive push coming in from Unbreakable. However, it is going to be stopped, and there you go. That's the end of it with the three players being wiped. Dust 2 take it. 501 to 315, a 200 point lead on TDM as well, which is probably the biggest point lead we've had so far today on a TDM map. Massive props to Dust2. They'll take the third place win. Sergio with three kills. Not, I'm not saying that in a bad way, but they were able to win with him only having three kills, showing he did a ton of damage. I didn't see his assist uh, since we did lose the screen so quickly, but he must have had so many assists to be able to do that much damage and to help his team really solidify these eliminations. Again, I'm really curious why they were playing super, super aggressive when they had like almost a 100-point lead. Maybe they weren't feeling confident in playing like a reactive style and having p people set up in a position they wanted to. But like you were mentioning, even though they would go in and they would like lose like a four for one exchange. They would come back, win a four for one exchange, and still somehow come out with an advantage off the back, or with a, with a bigger lead than they had before the, the last little bit of wipe they did. Well, it's Doron that takes the cake this time in terms of a top scoring position. It's going to be a little bit more spread out than we've seen in some of the previous map, but still a massive difference between the top player there on Dust Two and the top player and Unbreakable, with almost double the points on the top player from Dust2. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you, you can expect that, though, when, when you have one team win by almost 200 points. There's definitely a big difference between the two, but we've seen now, I mean, like, Armace, Doran, Sergio. I think the Spleen was the only one I don't remember seeing as, like, the, the MVP of the map. Mm. But I know he did a lot of great things over the course of both the series they played today. But just a team of all-stars, you know? Anyone who can step up at any given moment, there's not that one guy that's always doing well for the team. Uh, because that can always hurt you, right? That if you're that person and you don't play well that match, then it's like, well, what do we do? So it's nice to see them all be able to step up when the time did count. And again, remaining relatively similar in their usage of weaponry across the board there too in the loadouts that they ended up going for. Only one real designated sniper on either team. And with the... Uh the very kind of angle-heavy positioning that ends up playing out on that map, too. We didn't, I don't think we got to see much sniping happening so overall. What I'm seeing on this magic monitor here, we have Forza <laughs> with 200 points. Put, it drops them to second. Lazarus is either at 250 or 225. Dust2 is at 125. So there's still a 75-point difference between second and third place. Even with, with uh, Dust2 getting you know into third place, they still didn't close that, dif that difference. Technically, they did because it would have been it would have been like 100 points because the 25 point difference between the first and second place of Lazarus and Forza. Um, but because Forza lost and Lazarus won, it still maintains the 75 points. So even with that third place finish, doing so much better than they did in the last cup, they still didn't close the distance at all. And that just shows like how you need to have one of these first place finishes to really close this gap. And you have to be able to knock out one of these top two teams in the semis. Yeah, certainly the case. So that means there's a lot of pressure on our team's advantage to pull off upsets this week and push themselves forward as they're still vying to try and make their way into the top two. Like we said before, it's only the top two that will qualify for the Pro Series yeah. lands coming up in just a few weeks is going to be our first one. So... There's going to be pressure on those teams to try and make it. Well, that's a few weeks away, and now we're a few moments away, a few minutes away from going into our final with Lazarus up against Elements Pro Gaming. We'll see you guys on the other side of our break.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Guns of Boom Spring Challenger Series. We're underway with Season 2. I'm Jason Kaplan. He's blue. He's definitely not green today as we're looking at the money spot now for our final game of our cup number three. That wasn't bad. I'm not going to lie. Elements Pro Gaming up against Lazarus to see who comes out as first place and who takes home 
the biggest part of the prize pool of 400 bucks. And of course, more importantly, get the 100 points on their side so they can try to qualify through into the main event in Brazil. Well, there's going to be a whole lot more money on the line. Was that was that good, though? Yeah, that was pretty good. I thought that was actually pretty... I was literally off the top of my head. I swear. I was all right. You're doing, you're doing pretty good today. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like on point, you know. We we didn't we didn't we needed to play off the sheriff of the Hellmore on that on that last map or on the yeah. two maps ago. I guess it was now, but it's fine. Still, you know, we, we, have we have it here. We have it here. It's coming up in this series. Oh yes, another opportunity for it. So as we were saying before, it's going to be Lazarus. So we've seen move into this final in our previous weeks as well. They're going up against Elements Pro Gaming, who had the surprise this week, knocking out our top-ranked team in the entire league back, and I believe it was the quarterfinal. Then pushed their way through past Unbreakable, of course, in the match that we saw them play a little bit earlier on the stream, and have made it here to the final. They currently hold, not counting any points they've made already from this week's cup, a set. Seventh place tied position in the league. So this is a massive upset for Elements, and we should hopefully see them uh, ascend pretty heavily in the rankings as a result of making it just this far, even further, of course, if they can upset here and take out Lazarus. So if they if they win, they would go up to 125 points and tie Dust2 at third place with 125. <laughs> and then you have Fours at 200, and then you have Lazarus. Well, we'll see. Obviously, it's either 200 or 225. I, don't, I hate playing these points games. Or no, it's know. 225 or 250. Yeah, see, now now I just have no clue what's happening. So if Elements win, they'll move up from tied joint 7th place to 3rd place. Tied 3rd place. Gotcha. Which I, I don't know if they overtake 3rd place, they'd be joint 3rd place. Um, and then they would still be 75 points off of the 2nd place position. But hey, if you're going to come back in the season, right? If you're going to come back in these in these these cups, like this is your opportunity. If you win this, you kind of make a name for yourself. You win it again next week. Hey, you broke it through into top two. Mm -hmm. Most likely. Absolutely the okay. case. So big opportunity, of course, for... <laughs> too many point calculations for me that's, to that's say what, with like, confirmation. That's why I just don't do them. I'm just like, yeah, they're going to move on, up a lot. You've been so good with numbers today. Yeah, but not that good. Because now we've got like six different hypotheticals coming into play here. You know, you got you to gotta come up with like a whole like algebra formula just to, just to figure out the results. See, I miss the good old days of like GSL formats because I used to do it so often that I got like really good at it. So it's like a double elimination. So it's, it's uh, just a bracket. A double elimination oh. tournament, double elimination bracket before two teams. The the initial matches happen. The winners play the winners. The losers play the losers. Then the losers of the winners play the winners of the losers, and that decides the second team to get through into the next stage of the tournament. I feel like you could just say it's a double elimination bracket, and then like yeah, but that's the same definition. But I like I got so used to having to explain it um, back in some like previous shows like years ago that oh, it has a nice okay. little photo with the winners play the winners, the losers play the losers, the losers of the winners play the winners of the losers. Yeah. What was it's got, it's got some it's got flow, you know. You can make a rap out of it. <laughs> someone make like a gif of just, just I'm, I'm a metronome. Bobbing. Why's your head bobbing too? Like I'm a metronome. It's like you're like night uh night at the Roxbury here. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, you're like the like the the bird. Oh, what was that? The bird? Yeah, what? the bird, the the meme. Oh, there's my pen again. Can you pick it up for me? <laughs> <laughs> no. I legitimately not gonna do it. Okay, there it is. Good, my arms are long enough to reach the ground, so so, you know, you're, so you're are my feet. Over, you're going like, about long arms now. <laughs> so, so are my feet. My feet can reach the ground. I don't know how long. I don't know if I can say that for both of us. Is, is that something to gloat about? Like you have long arms? Like I don't. I technically don't. I mean, they're just the. They're proportionally the same size as yours. Okay. What about hand size? Let's, how are we doing there? I don't want to touch your hand. No, you just put it up. No. Because we have the we have the monitor. We can just put your hand up like this. No. All right. See, I have a bigger hand than him. Then I win by default. <laughs> I don't think anyone out there believes you have. A bigger hand than me when I'm way taller. Well, I mean, you didn't you didn't play the game. I got the so. bigger nose, the bigger ego, <laughs> the bigger X's on my uh, my casting history. I'm just trying to guess based on him putting his hand up every couple of seconds. There, it's not really working. Just keep it in the fist, then you have no opportunity. <laughs> this is me now. This is my life. Well, like I said, I win by default, so I'll take that. Anyway, moving back into the game, like we said before, Lazarus. You're gonna get that one guy out there who's like, wait a minute, I'm gonna I'm gonna go full detective, full Sherlock Holmes on this, and to take. He's gonna go back in the Photoshop. No, he's, yeah, he's gonna go back in the show and then just do like oh, I'm gonna keep doing this like an opac or opacity like picture overlay, <laughs> two hands to see who's got the bigger one. He's gonna like digitally open your fist somehow and like, <laughs> he's <gonna> Photoshop <laughs> my hand open. No, I'm pretty sure at some point in the show this week or previous weeks I have had, you know, the full hand up. Like no, I'm like, like even like this. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. But just can we do it here where no one can see? No, oh, no, come on. That's dangerous because people can just use their magic. Well, I mean, just like keep, the, just keep like your arm in the picture at least. So, what does that have to do with hand size? 
don't, I don't know. Moving forward. I think I think we might have to head to a break here because I can see our uh, our admins trying to get into the match and they're they're struggling here at the moment. Just gonna say the word break to potentially see if production's gonna respond to it or not, or just say no, Jason. It's think, probably think, gonna be a no, Jason. Yeah, it's, it's gonna, gonna be head no, shaking, Jason. So. so you know what we can do just to really anger production. This is actually so. If you guys don't know about you know like commentating stuff like that, there's always this constant like war going on between talent and production. Oh, it's a war. Yeah, I'm I'm calling now as a war where we just do like the whole yeah we're throwing a break and then even if production says no and we just sit here until you know it gets so awkward that they throw off the break screen. <laughs> Could do it. I don't. Won't I don't, do I it. I don't like to do that. And I'm not gonna do it considering I have to work with them for like the next three yeah. months straight. So yeah, I'm not gonna. Okay. But we're obviously waiting for... Um... I take the stance. We're all on the same team here. Let's work together. Right, guys? Should... Wow. He, just... <laughs> he gave you... I, I, I can't say what he did to me, but... You're number one. Yeah. I, just, I, I guess we're not a team. That's a unique... Guess, that's I, a unique I'm on your side now after that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I, just, I just flipped sides. I'm on his side of this argument now. Never mind. Well, production Let the is, war begin. Production, oh, sorry, production is telling me that they're losers and that we're cool. That's <laughs> you just call them names. That's not... <laughs> like, Wait, he gave a thumbs up for that. What? <laughs> Dude, and the great part is the guy who's doing that was like straight up eating like seven crepes with Nutella on it. Just just eating it. Just like they didn't even have his dinner yet. He was just like, I'm gonna eat my dessert. <laughs> it was great. It was great. That's how I like to live my life. Yeah, so uh I, yeah, um I want to head to break because I can see we're still trying to like re-log into a account, but we'll give it one more try here. But if it doesn't work, we're gonna head to break to build up the it's suspense. Tension. Yes, this is, that's a better word. The suspense of our finals. And I can see right now that we are loading very close into the game. Not to the match, into the actual. So what do you think, as an Arizona game, unfortunately, what do you think is going to be happening in this match? Just we um, well, what I think is um, that you so know, coming into Elements versus Lazarus is that we're going to be heading to a break here. So when we come back, we'll be kicking off that final, and maybe we'll I find tried. out my thoughts of how that match is going to go.
So that's why I think that this team is actually going to win the match. Okay, gotcha. five. That's cool. Um, yeah, welcome back, everyone, to the Guns of Boom Season 2 Challenger Series. We're into our spring season. Jason Kaplan, he is blue, and we're not sad anymore as we do have the game ready to go. And we should be hopping in any moment now between Elements Pro Gaming and Lazarus, who is looking for their second first place finish this season. He was at this year. Hmm? You almost said this year, didn't you? No. No, no? Okay. It was to build tension. Got it. Suspense. Got it. I keep sitting on my cord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, for Elements Pro Gaming, they, of course, are looking for what I believe would be their first victory overall. It's um, their first top, I'd say, like, like top, top eight. four? Or? Yeah, definitely top four. It could yeah. be top eight as well. So this is a massive tournament already for these guys, and if they can upset against Lazarus in a best of five, that's pushing the agenda even further along for them, and, and not only that, but obviously increases the point margin uh, pretty heavily to allow them to push forward. I believe you said into like third place or theoretically third place. Oh, so you were listening. Yeah, I am. It would be joint third place, but they'll still be 75, 75 points behind second. And then of course there's some like fluctuation in there just based on all the other results and whatnot. No, that's, that's what it is. Oh, I guess second place right. is now Forza. So we are like in the last game, so it should be pretty determined. There's no fluctuations. Four is a second at 200 points. Okay. Lazarus is either going to have uh, 225 or 250. And if Knights or if Elements win, they'll go up to 125, which is joint with Dust 2 at 125. Very cool. All right, guys. So we should be just a couple seconds away. I think we're just waiting for the... Not only taller, <laughs> not only can touch the floor while sitting down with his feet and his hands, can also do standings. Yeah. Look at you. But he's not more handsome. That's the downside. <laughs> okay. Well, we should be getting into this it's match. A compliment for you. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. One, one of the few that I give you. <laughs> <laughs> it seems so. <laughs> Here we go, folks. It looks like we are loading oh, in. What? I just, okay, never mind. I got it for later. I'll save this little this little nugget I just pulled out. I'm gonna save it for later. Okay. Well, let's get into the game, as I believe it's ready finally now, and we'll be jumping in. No. Okay. No. No, we're not. Apologies. Oh, we may be. I Who knows? It. See, this is why you don't throw to the game. This is why I throw to the game. Well, then I'll just I'll just sit back then. You. Well, the game has started, Take and we'll. Try <laughs> Which I don't want to go back too far. <laughs> yeah, how could you be even shorter? Let's just lay it down, <laughs> lounging, man. JDM style. Um, so at the moment we are on a uh, farming complex. It's 150 to 70, uh, 95 points. Currently, Lazarus is in the lead, actually with about 200 points. They're quickly shooting up even further. We're hopefully gonna get the game on your screen in just a second, but I obviously want to tell you what is happening in the time that we can. Um, 260 to 130, so have a 130 point lead, and they are just storming through with this lead and continuing to do so as this game progresses further. This is where you. They're going to continue to push themselves forward as well. I'm trying to figure out a solution. Alt enter. No, hold on. Uh, try just alt tabbing into it. That might actually fix it if you just alt tab. 406 to 212. Lots are continuing. I'll just do this. I've, I've cast it with no Radio cast? actual screen before. Whoa. It's like the Winamp days. Uh, 474 <laughs> to 245 points. They currently, if Lazarus have control of just the C point or are getting control of A, so they're going to have a 2 to 1 up against the 1 point, but they even might have a trip cap here in just a few seconds. And with the rate that this is going, Divine King's on elimination streak at 121 points. It is looking pretty good here so far for Lazarus to take this first map. Definitely going to be shooting ahead pretty convincingly. However, we did just see the members of Pro Gaming moving back in to take control of this middle point. Hot Pepper is the one trying to do that. However, he's going to get knocked out by Lord Mono. Quark at the same time is going to be able to pick up two kills on his own with the most recent one being against Lord Mono. Quark maintains the C point in the meanwhile, while the other two still are under the control of Lazarus. They maintain a two cap lead, and here we go. Finally into the game, folks. I do apologize once again for that, but we are live and we get to see the last half of this first map now between Lazarus and Elements. Yeah, speaking of halves, at the moment, Elements Pro Gaming have half the points, actually less than that, up against Lazarus. Really showing that they deserve to be the number one team so far here in Europe, and they're definitely showing their stuff here as they approach that 900-point line, and are getting ever so closer to getting this first map under their belts. Lord Mono going to try to sneak up over here onto the A point. However, unfortunately, it's not too successful. There's already two players from EPG holding onto it, and they're going to be able to fend off the entire push from Lazarus. They maintain that. Problem is, though, those B and C points are constantly staying under the control of Lazarus, making it very difficult for these guys to run a comeback. Divine King sitting on the edge actually can't really maintain B any longer. There's enough presence from EPG to at least decap that and probably get the full cap off in just a second. They're waiting for Romeo and probably one or two other players to get into position, but look at this. The second they take control of B, they dive off it, start moving over towards another point. 
Lazarus attempt to do a little bit of back capping of their own, but for the most part, it's unsuccessful. A lot of instability coming in right now, but thankfully, it's not going to end up mattering for Lazarus. They still control two points, and in just a few seconds, they're going to push up to 1,200. Yeah, 100% here as they're going to finish off this first map in a very convincing style. Divine King at 10 kills, Lord Mono at 10 himself. Macaronia. Macaroni. Macaronina. 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 Yeah, Macaronina. That's what I said. Yeah. Uh, one kill, unfortunately. Didn't have the greatest of games, but you saw basically almost doubling the score, how dominating that was for Lazarus and how different it was. You know, thinking back to Element, uh, Element Pro Gaming beating Unbreakable and then just to get stomped like that on the first map is not a good sign for them. Uh, but Lazarus definitely seems to be one of those teams that, funny enough, is actually more of like a TDM style from what we've had in their match versus Dust 2. And yet they made it look like they fixed any problems they had in their first match and just completely came into this game ready to go. Yeah, so convincing opening performance coming out from Lazarus. Now we'll get to see if they'll continue that. And more importantly, if EPG is unfortunately going to have to do a little bit more work before they're ready to take on teams like Lazarus here in the Grand Finals, or if they'll be able to bounce it back moving on to maps 2 and 3 to hopefully prevent a 3-0 shutdown coming in from Lazarus here. Quite a convincing first map, though. The few things that we saw EPG try to do to counter out the moves from Lazarus uh, were relatively unsuccessful. A few back attempts that were getting fended off relatively easily, and other similar adjustments that unfortunately never really worked out for them throughout the course of that first map. Okay, so we should be hopping into Military Warehouse in just a few seconds, just getting back into the game and getting things sorted on our end, and hopefully everything is ready to go here in just a few seconds. This uh, this is kind of wood, right? Um, oh, who's there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's hard to tell, to be honest. I think it's wood. It's a form of wood. I think it's like a... I think it's like... It's like from the, uh, the, the tree of plastic? <laughs> no, I think it's wood. It's like the, what's the type of wood that's like, like the shavings, it's almost like glued together, like. A snow cone? <laughs> no, <laughs> see, you have glue in your snow cone? <laughs> we see the points totals coming I mean, out about there shavings. once again. Now I think about food. No, there's, it's like, I forget the name of it. It's, it's, there, it does have a name, but it's basically like, like wood scrappings and it's just like kind of glued together. It's like, not plywood, but some, something I else. I mean, it's a sturdy desk. It's yeah, probably yeah. better than what I have at home. You can make I, like I, pretty sturdy like furniture out of that type of stuff. We can see the loadouts here as well. It's good height for you too. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll continue to look and see if there's any real variances coming in here. It looks like on the assault and rifle categories for the most part, we're seeing a team stick with pretty much the same exact loadouts across the board. Snipers should be pretty similar too. Maybe one or two exceptions. Let's take a look. Exactly the same. So no one's sniping on either of these teams, at least in that first map. That could change, of course. Which we'll be sure to keep our eyes on that. If I'm seeing this correctly, by the way, uh, Enix is in the finals of the North American tournament. I didn't see who they were up against, but I think uh, the final match is actually happening at the same time, funny enough. Um, but Enix is actually currently in the lead in North America at 175 points. I think they're playing its impact. If I did see... Honestly, I didn't notice who they were playing against. I'm just going to guess it was Impact because Impact are currently in second place in the uh, uh, the, the season as well. It's an um, early day for those NA, NA players. They're getting done like 1 o'clock. you just be waking up right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Quite literally, actually. Actually, I'm curious. like, How hard is it for you to get into bed? Like, Do you have to get a ladder or step stool <laughs> to climb into it? What do you think? I have like a bunk bed? <laughs> no, just a normal bed. <laughs> No. Do, you sleep, do, you have the, just, do you have a mattress that's just on the ground so you don't have to climb anymore? <laughs> Much like normal people, I sleep in a normal bed. <laughs> yes, is I it am, in a frame? The worst part is, like, I'm not even, like, short. I'm, like, average height. Like, <laughs> like five foot nine is, like, literally average height. <laughs> You're just tall. <laughs> Hey, I mean, Fortunately, a lot of people are in the tall same, in esports, so I end up being short by default most of the time. In the same yeah. sense of this, like, you know, like the McDonald's play areas or anything like that. Like, I <laughs> oh, was too I tall when I was like five years old, and I'm sitting there at like five, and there's like kids who are eight or nine in there, and I'm just like jealous that they get to play, and I'm just too tall for it. Yeah. But then again, the other side of that is sometimes I'm too tall for roller coasters. You can be too tall for a roller coaster? Have you seen how close they get to things? Yeah, but they like they test there for like a seven foot person, I think, with most of those. Yeah, but some like some roller coasters I can't fit in, like leg wise, like I actually oh. it, like hurts, like because they jam me in there. Well, you gotta pay the price for like fun a shoehorn when you're to get tall, me out. A <laughs> shoehorn to get me out. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. Are we are we in the game? Are we almost ready to go. I can see. Uh, we're we're working on it right now, I believe. Yes, Wait, I see. Tell me when you have lobby. Okay, so I think we're still. No, that's a North American game. 
I think uh, I think I just messed up. I think he told the North Americans to get him. In. Oh no, I think it's a different game. Um, yeah. So obviously waiting for this. I don't know. No, maybe I was right. I think I was right. Okay, yeah. Probably we're confusing the viewers more and more every time you say, every time you say something. About what okay, it's fine. I just, want, I just want to talk. I just want to talk. Go ahead, Blue. Well, at the moment, folks, we are waiting for the admins to set up the lobby, as far as I know, for the second map. So we're just waiting on that one. And, of course, the players themselves to ready up. So stick with us, and we'll continue to uh, talk to you. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to think of a much more complicated word for that. I couldn't. Uh, while we do wait for that, overall, like we said before, a very decisive first map. So, unfortunately, there isn't a whole lot to break down here because we saw EPG try to do a few adjustments um, and just never really worked out for them. So, ultimately, they kind of ran into a wall there. Um, and for the most part, Lazarus were able to complete those rotations, back caps, and things like that to kind of out with them and take it wide. I think it was like a three, 400 point margin in the first map. And now we're going to be going over to what should be a TDM map, if I recall correctly. Yes? You can, like, nod at least, you know? Just <laughs> what is that? You're still nodding. You're just doing it with your hand. <laughs> I don't get the point of that. <laughs> you could just done it with your head. It would have been the same exact thing. <laughs> you do you, man. <laughs> But I can see we have most players in the lobby now, so it's just a matter of getting them in, getting them readied up, and getting ready to start our second map, where we'll be jumping into that in the next few seconds here. It's going to be the same rotation as we saw in the previous series as well. Best of five. Same as our third place matches. And that means it's three to win. So Lazar are already in a good position with one map going into their favor. Two more, and they will take this week's cup and the 100 points that comes along with that, in addition to the, four, I believe it's 400 US dollars, I didn't actually check on that on the website because sometimes the European Cups do Euros, but I believe in this case it's 400 US dollars that the first place team will be taking home for themselves. And obviously there's still a progressive downscale of the prize pool from that point forward for our second, third, and fourth place teams, if I remember correctly, as well. You, you winced there. Was that wrong? Or you? I know you have it, don't you? On there? Can I can I borrow this? No? You'll, 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 you'll shake your head for that, but you won't. You... <laughs> It's been a solid like three minutes of just no. It's just, it's just oh, he's back. It's just great because you're like explaining things at its most basic level. It's like well, yeah. to take a breath, you need to suck in air into your lungs, <laughs> and then you get the oxygen into your blood, and at the same time, you take the carbon dioxide out of your blood, and then you exhale it back out. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's progressively lower, uh, you know, prizes for not placing first. It's like yeah, well, I mean, that's how it works. Sometimes, sometimes you have like those all or nothing tournaments, you know, where. Only first place gets money. Everybody else is, nah, get out of here. Go home. You don't get anything. It's not the case here. I'm going to go back to not talking again. <laughs> <Is anyone? laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're heading to break. I can. St they're having tons of problems with the lobby, getting all the players in and, and good to go. Um, I don't see our producer nodding that I can go to break. So I guess we'll just keep talking for now. Yeah. And by we, I mean Blue will keep talking for now. And I'll just sit here and look at his, uh, his alfalfa hair. Is it even there? It's, hard. it's actually nice because the set is like darkly colored. So it's like, it's hard to see unless I like. Let's see here. <laughs> I'm gonna put myself on the white. Oh no, it moved. <laughs> the did... lights aren't moving. <laughs> no, the 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 white look on the on the monitor. See how it's like going in and out, kind of like this every a couple seconds. No, you'll see it. See right there. It just it just moved out more, and now it's gonna move in again in like three seconds. One. That was All right. So I I don't know the exact timings, but. All right, so uh, break. Can we can we go to break again? Where we're having some issues getting all the teams into the lobby and all set to go. Yeah, it looks like we had to redo the lobby, unfortunately. So, a little bit more of a bump there. We do apologize for that, folks. Of course, we're working. I think I'm seeing a nod. We're working on settling that as quickly as possible. But if my co caster got the all clear, I think we'll be heading to it. Okay, break. yes, there it is. There it is. Okay, so we're going to head to a break again. Unfortunately, we, uh, we do apologize for the delays of getting the game ready to go. But we're trying to make sure we have every player in the lobby to play out the match like you need to. Just like breathing with the oxygen going in your lungs <laughs> and out. So, we'll see you guys after this break. Jesus.
Now we're back, ladies and gentlemen, here with the grand finals of cup number three of the Guns of Boom Challenger Series Season 2 for the spring season. I'm Jason Kaplan, joined by Alfalfa here to my side. Yes, she took some time away from doing Little Rascals 2, where they are now. Basically, it's a VH1 crossover with Little Rascals movie. And we're about to get underway here. It's not with even really there anymore, is it? No, it's still kind of there. It's hard to see. Now you're just accentuating it. It's not fair. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, really there now. Jesus. All right. So uh, right, really from what I can see, uh, we are basically ready to go. We're just waiting for like a player or two to ready up. We already had farming complex happen with Lazarus just absolutely whitewashing away Elements Pro Gaming. Then we have Military Warehouse. What? You took me put it down. Yeah. I'm disappointed. Wild West Saloon. I'm professional. Skyscrapers and Atrium. Yeah, I guess because actually what I can see is it's still up. If you move your head a little bit to your right. I think that's just the... No, move to the right. I think that's the move floor. To your right. Yep, you can see right there. A little, little nubbin. All right, so we're getting <laughs> the game. A little nubbin. All right, so everyone is loaded in, I believe. The game is about to start. We do apologize for the delays, but unfortunately that does happen sometimes here when you're doing a live show. And we're kicking things off here with Lazarus, the one to zero lead. All right, guys, let's get directly into it now and see if Lazarus is going to be able to keep constant control over things or if EPG has a way to battle back into it. As we've kind of come to expect, it's going to be a little back and forth to start things off relatively even trades. And ultimately, at the end of the day, both teams are going to still stay even at the end of the first exchange. A nice shot from Excellence, though. The single shot on the Hot Pepper is going to take him out. Try to push Lazarus a little bit further into the lead. Let's see if Hot Pepper can kind of transform into a ghost pepper here because they might need it after very one-sided <laughs> like a little chuckle out of you thanks man like it always depend on you to give me a little chuckle even if the joke's really bad um with the completed one site match that we did have in our first map you see Lazarus playing passive here a little bit as romeo is going to unfortunately miss his shots what mono though it was an angle in about two players he used to hit the damage done Mono going to try to make a push for it. This is actually going to be really dangerous considering his HP, but it ends up working out pretty well. Finds the frag, pick up onto Hot Pepper, but as you'd expect, a pretty quick trade comes in from Court. Got more players here. Romeo trying to get some damage done here as well, but no, nope. Excellence is going to be able to knife out Max. Macaronina is also going to be able to find a few pickups here too. Two more going into their direction. EPG is keeping up this time. Only seven points behind Lazarus. It's definitely a much different match so far here on the second map. Lord Mono currently at 64 points, able to lead his team in score. We've seen a little bit of a slower style, you know, thinking back to Military Warehouse and Skyscrapers when we had Unbreakable versus Dust 2 is a lot quick, a lot quicker. Actually, I can't even say it was quicker because this is about the same kind of scoreline. It just feels slower, though, for some reason. Um, there's definitely a lot of eliminations happening for both these two teams. 53 point lead at the moment for Lazarus, so they don't need to be the ones to push up anymore. But I don't know if they're going to continue to play passive or just go aggressive like they've been playing for the last you know, two minutes. EPG's definitely grown a little bit more timid, it seems, to take engagements. So they just changed that now with a push they made on their own. The problem is they're getting dominated. It's all coming down to Romeo, who is absolutely destroying EPG in his position right now. A few more kills going in his direction. And now Lazarus nearly have themselves a 100-point lead. It's going to start to go down a little bit. Max gets himself a nice little double elimination. That will boost the points a little bit further up for them. Divine King with a miss on his knife, meaning Macaronina will pick up another frag as well. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, my Romeo? Oh, top of the scoreboard, 125 points. Able to get the return kill on, no chuckle that time. Able to return kill on to Max. A little bit disappointed here, Donnie Blue. The, the mic didn't pick it up. It was there, though. <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> You're such a liar. <laughs> but only 30 point difference, 31 points between the two. Two minutes left to go, but we're approaching that 500 point mark, which you need to see both teams cross to get the map victory. That was a really good rocket coming through. You can see the burn damage come into Max. Trying to heal this one up. Roman comes in back again for another 149 for this man. Basically turned into a player here. 424 to 373. And it looks like Lazarus might take this one home. They might get one map away from winning the series and taking home another first place finish. It's going to come down to the wire a little bit though as EPG are making a small comeback towards the end of the map. Only about 40 points behind Lazarus. Only three or four kills now, but the problem is Lazarus are back out on the field and they're trading. That's not what EPG need to have happen at this point in the match. Another pickup for Lazarus. It's them closer and closer to victory here, but they bring it back. 451 to 486. Only really one or two more kills needed for Lazarus here, but EPG is slowly closing the gap as well. Problem though, EPG needs to be flawless from this point forward, and that's an incredibly difficult task to accomplish here in GOB. You see the team's trying to regroup here. Excellent, trying to watch that left-hand side. Should have given some sort of cover. 
Max trying to heal back up. He's got no armor left, though, so he has to be very careful. Can't be the first one to get dropped here. And the one kill can pretty much determine who's going to win this one. The nade comes through. Quark's going to get the kill onto Romeo. But that's going to be it. Lazarus get the final elimination they needed on the board. And Romeo, with 11 kills and 156 points, is going to be the one to help carry them through to a 2-0 lead. So they take the win on our first map for capture points. They take the win on our second map here in TDM. Now only one more objective stands in their way, and that is going to be a King of the Hill map. They take that one, and they've got the solid 3-0. What's up? <laughs> Sorry, Sheriff of the Hill. Apologies. Better. Forgot it was that map. Thought it was a little bit later on in the rotation. I was wrong. I just really want to cue, like, the... I can't even do the sound correctly. You know, like, when we think of old westerns and, like... You know, when they're walking out to have their duel, you hear the wah, 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 wah. Oh, the, wah, uh, wah, wah. the the song is the the Ecstasy of Gold. Is really? What the song's called. Yeah. How do you know that? How's that on the top of your head? I know a lot of really random information, and that's one piece of it. So, so crabs, like, what are their feet called? <laughs> 193 points for Cork, who had a fantastic game, but unfortunately, you need a couple of players to really step up when it comes to TDM, because as the name does say, it's team deathmatch, not mm -hmm. solo deathmatch. And Romeo, 156 for himself. Same eliminations, and Romeo with the assist, but it must have been like the, the pain train that Cork was able to pull off, getting multiple kills in a row to really build up those points. Yeah, it's not only that, but again, it's just, it's just I think, more superior positioning coming out from the guys on Lazarus. Um, it seemed like EPG, after they had gotten wiped and we were sitting at like the, the 200 point mark where both teams were relatively close, it seemed like EPG were really timid to try and take a fight, but they were the ones that had to. They were the ones that needed to pick up kills. Ultimately, if it went to timer, we still would have seen Lazarus come out on top because they had a small lead, um, and they just never really found a good way to initiate, it seemed like. All right, so we should be hopping into our good Wild West Saloon here. Potentially our final map of the night, but keep in mind we do have our little bit of a, a podcast thing going on today. It'll just be about like eh, 10 minutes, but in the future weeks we'll have a, a little bit of a longer time. And of course, bringing on guests into the show. I think Nokia might be our first guest coming into uh, two weeks. from. Actually, it can't be two weeks from now because we're going to be in Texas. That's correct. So it'll be in a month from now. A full month? Yeah. Like three weeks. Wouldn't it? Actually, I don't know. I don't know what... Because I think it goes, I think it starts Because like I think it's a week off for everyone. Oh, is it? Okay. And then it'll kick back off. So it's NA, EU, NA next week, and then Texas. So yeah, that would be in three weeks. So then three okay. weeks we'll be kicking off, I think, the podcast with the guests. I think Nokia will be there. Maybe he'll be talking about his victory in Texas. In a big portion of that $40,000. Very possible. And I wonder how that works, because he's already qualified for, for Gods of Boom with Noble. He's a winner of that event. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to it now, because that's yeah, something we'll talk about later on in the podcast. <laughs> That is very interesting. I wanted cool. to jump the gun. We can have like a... you need to jump the gun and the duel coming into King of the Hill here. <laughs> <laughs> is that your attempt at a southern accent? No, I, 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 can't, I, I am from the south, actually. I just don't use the accent. Well, all right. We'll work ourselves into it now. I'm not even going to go, y'all. <laughs> I'm not even going to attempt one. <laughs> the, wild, well, the Wild West isn't from the south, necessarily. No, but it's still got, like, that accent going. With no. The... No? Because they had it in like, California, like, all the time. Like, California's not the south. I mean, technically speaking, it is. Half of it is. It's in the southern half of the of the U.S. It's not it's not part of the so southern region of the U.S. I suppose. Yeah, that's correct. I think that definition is, has shifted to the east slightly over the past, like, 100 years. So take it for what you will. Speaking of 100, almost a 100-point lead here for Lazarus. However, it's dwindling a little bit here. It, it seems like EPG have been able to take the point back from themselves, but they are slowly losing it. Respawns are coming in. This will be their last chance to hold on to it, but it seems like they just, wow. at minimum, they're able to delay the decap for a really long time. And as you can see, take the lead. Problem is only by 20 points. Max, again, they're going to try to save the day. We saw earlier on in the tournament the great positioning he was able to utilize. He does it once again. It's stopped at about half decap there, and it's actually strange. We don't see anyone going on to contest that a little bit sooner. So it will end up getting decapped. They'll get it back really quickly, though, and again, credit to EPG. They're doing a good job of holding on to this. It's not a solid hold, but the respawns, they're moving in solid waves here to constantly force their opponents off and prevent them from making a comeback. This is exactly what happened with Unbreakable and Dust2. Both teams just fighting the entire time. And such a close score of this point. But then once one team finally did get good control of it is when they really started to show, uh, show off with the Dust was able to take like a 200 point lead off the back of it. You can see that 461 to 460 and constantly being battled out from both these teams. Exodus tries to come in, but he won't be able to hold this one. And I think, I finally think EPG are going to be the team to hold and maintain control of the point. It looks like that will be the case, of course. Never mind. <laughs> Respawn still moving in, but we do have... 
Macaronina up on top is able to delay for a few more seconds here. Excellent's going to be able to get himself onto the point. Finally gets another decap going, and this is after we've seen EPG move up by about 100 points or so, but that could be changing. It seems like fragging power-wise, Lazarus are still keeping up very much so with EPG, but that cap from Lazarus does not last very long at all. EPG storm the point, get control of it incredibly quickly back into their court, and now about nearly a 200 point lead over Lazarus. Since gets two, Lord Monos will be flanked from behind Max. That was a massive elimination from him and Hot Pepper together. Remu comes back in, takes on Max. He's gonna need to take down Hot Pepper though as he does have the reinforce come in on the side, but the side reinforce of Divine King is not gonna be well enough as you can still see constant battles and yet Elements Pro Gaming with control of the point have been able to build up a 150 point lead. However, it's very, very quickly moving back into Lazarus' favor here of these next few moments. Lazarus need to try and keep some of their players alive to prevent EPG from ticking forward like we saw there with Divine King. A pretty big overextender from him leads to his death, and now this is going to allow for EPG to move on. Probably going to decap for themselves too. Unfortunately, one of the other members of Lazarus had to rotate back up to the top balcony. That was Lord Mono to take better positioning. Divine King is trying to pick these players off from a distance. He will be able to find one for himself, but they are very quickly running out of time, and just like that, EPG cross the threshold. A thousand points for them. They will take map number three, meaning they are not done just yet. Lazarus still hold the lead, of course, at two to one in the series but EPG, they have found positioning now in this series. 316 points for Max. It's one of the highest score lines I think I've seen out of an individual player, but considering how that match went, it was just constant, non-stop battle for the point, which is very different than what we saw like Paradise Island, because obviously you see teams get some control and it kind of flips back and forth, but that was just constantly fighting each other, and then eventually um, EPG able to just get the control they needed and able to hold the point for the most part or for the longer period of time in general when it came down to it. But you, you still kind of wonder if we did see Lazarus get control of the point, could they have potentially turned the tides? And as the game went longer and longer on, obviously that answer became clearer and clearer. Yeah, unfortunately, just weren't able to hold it for a long enough period of time. And EPG definitely took the lion's share of control when it came down to that at the end of the day. Lazarus potentially having more eliminations out of it. But between our two top players, it was very close in the elimination department. Same for assists and deaths. So KD overall looking pretty close. But the score side of things definitely gave a pretty clear advantage to Max. Either way, they were both impressive performances there at 268 and 316. We should be heading over to Skyscraper as our potentially final map of the night, or will we be going the full five here and head over to Atrium as our fifth and final map between these two teams? Again, Elements Pro Gaming currently in joint eighth, well, seventh place at the moment at 25 points, but with this position they now got themselves through to, they've easily broken into, I'd say, like top five, able to pass Unity. Um, if they win this, though, they'll be going into joint third place, but still be 75 points behind the second place team of Forza. Either way, it's nice to see a team that isn't normally in the top four, be able to, you know, make it for once, mm -hmm. you know, and it hasn't been an easy feat for them because they did have to beat La uh, uh, Forza. They had to beat Unbreakable. Like, they had to beat some really good teams to get here today. And not only that, but they're keeping up, too. Um, it's not it's not been an outright, you know, 0-3 defeat, as, as, as we were kind of expecting coming into this one in the favor of Lazarus. EPG have been able to keep up. Uh, they've been able to, at the very minimum, give us two close maps now, one that they were able to come out on top of and one that, that unfortunately fell behind on at the last moment. So this is still it, though. This is still the hot seat for them as we're going to be moving on, as you said, Skyscraper in just a couple seconds here as soon as the players have readied up. And this could potentially still be the end for EPG if they don't hold themselves together and take control of this map as well. Yeah, still waiting for play three players, now two here for Elements Pro Gaming to ready up and one for Lazarus. Uh, and we should be able to get under this or get underway at this one. Did you have a prediction for this match? I think I said before... We actually started the series, like when we were off air, that I imagine Lazarus could take this fairly easily. Mm -hmm. And then my confidence was raised even higher after the first map where they had almost a double point lead uh, when we were on control. But I think there's a legitimate chance Elements Pro Gaming can come back. It's just going to come down to can they keep that composure over these next two maps. Yeah, I'm, I'm personally, I didn't give a prediction earlier, but I would still favor Lazarus, and that was my prediction going into it as well. Yeah. Um, so I still think they have the edge of this one overall at the end of the day, and we'll take it. But... It's not necessarily a closed book just yet, EPG, especially with that map going into their favor. And another opportunity on a TDM map coming up here in just a couple of seconds. They certainly still have good chances to swing this back into their favor and take it 3-2, to two ultimately, on the fifth map. All right, I think we're just waiting...
Okay, no, we got pretty much all players. Yeah, we got all players ready to go. So we should be hopping in just a few seconds. So I was just keeping an eye on, on the lobby. We didn't want to have any more issues or any more delays uh, in the show today. Keep in mind, once we are done with the, the final map and the series has concluded, we'll be heading into a short break and we'll be coming back. we we'll a quick little like 10 minute talk about what's been going on in other regions. We'll be looking at North America. We're going to be obviously looking at Europe and all and the standings overall, as well as Latin America and Southeast Asia. So with how things break down coming to Brazil, you have two European teams, two North American teams, one Latin American team, and one Southeast Asian team. So we're going to see if the teams who have already qualified for Texas are at the top of the rankings for Brazil. So here we do, kicking things off on Skyscraper, potentially our final map of the night. All right, let's get into it and take a look and see if Lazarus can close things out now or if it's EPG bringing it back for their own opportunity. Try and upset. Of course, get a cool 100 points for themselves if they can take the victory here. It's going to be incredibly passive from both teams at the start. You can see little chips of damage going off onto both teams at this point, but first eliminations looks like they're going to work their way over towards EPG instead. And as such, we'll see Lazarus lag behind just a little bit, though. Only you know two or three kills overall happening in the match so far, so still plenty of opportunity for Lazarus to change their fate here and get the early lead. Should be an easy elimination for Lord Mono. There we go. It's going to say if you flush that one, then that's not going to be a good sign. But 64 to 31 should be another clean elimination coming through. But now they're being flanked from behind. The call should have been made. Roma should be able to turn around and at least get one of these. And he will be able to do just that. Able to help close this distance to now just 22 points. It's still very close and even more passive than the third place match we had on this map earlier on today. Both teams really not wanting to take any massive risks with their push. Romeo seems to not take a too much off that note, however. He's going to be incredibly aggressive. Only goes one for one, ultimately, though. Hot Pepper's going to make a push in for himself. He knows he has Divine King really low. Was not prepared for Excellence and Lord Mono sitting on the back foot of the central room, however. So he will fall without any kills going into his favor. And Romeo, that position he was playing with uh, right in front of Lord Mono, was so smart, too, because he peeks, shoots, backs away for the reload. A peak shoot, so he eliminates the amount of time he's in line of sight of his enemies, so he takes the minimal amount of damage he possibly can to put out the maximum amount of damage he can do. Really smart play and something you're going to see out of these top players, and at the moment, Elements Pro Gaming do still maintain the lead, but with how small the gap is, and with how kind of aggressive these teams are playing, I can quickly turn on its head as, like, looks like Excellence will be able to pick up an elimination, Divine King as well, and just like that, Lazarus have taken the lead themselves. So... Excellence and Divine King still trying to hold this top entrance to the middle room here. The problem is Divine King falls yet again here. We've got Max along with two other members of EPG who kind of working together as a group, trying to isolate these players out. Romeo has spotted them. They know exactly where they are. Lazarus, though, keep pushing into them almost as solo individuals here. So EPG's strategy to hold back passively has at very minimum kept them at arm's length of taking the lead away from Lazarus. Just hasn't been able to find that definitive advantage in a fight yet to push them ahead. And that might be the ticket right there with Max taking out Romeo. They've got an opportunity to push in and steal mid room control away from the guys on Lazarus now. A lot of burn, burning damage coming through here out of these teams. Quirk's going to come through, take down Lord Mono. Two point difference between the two as it looks like he might get a flank onto Romeo or is Romeo actually going to hear this one out or will he even look in that direction? Actually, it's going to spot him out, get some good chip onto him. And I think Quirk's going to fall just from the burn alone. And yes, he will. Now Romeo's going to go for the flank. He's going to get behind Max. He's going to get the shot, get the knife in and get this lead growing for them. He's going to push in for a third and he gets just that. So, still no clear leader though. Lazarus ahead, but only by about 20 points or so. So an easy opportunity for Elements to bring themselves back into it. Just a couple of frags going in their direction, which there's one happening in clean fashion right there. In fact, they followed up with about two or three more. Absolutely massacres the members of Lazarus right there, taking them out and allowing for finally EPG to take a little bit of a lead here. It doesn't seem like it's going to stay that way for very long if things continue to go into Lazarus' favor. Yes, they now take the lead away from EPG as well. Still just two points, though, with a minute and 30 left to go, so it's a lot slower pace than what we saw in our last match with Unbreakable up against Dust2. This lead just constantly bouncing between two and, like, 20 points. You see the push coming in. Divine King's getting it behind them, and this should be a cleanup for him. There we go. Gets the shot on a Hot Pepper, and again, that lead about 30 points between the two. A minute left to go. I think this one actually might come down to time at this rate, Blue. Yeah, especially if EPG kind of come out of spawn relatively slowly here, which looks like it is the case. Divine King taking a bit of a risk taking the solo duel against Quark here, considering he's a slightly lower HP. But they're holding that mid room and basically putting everything they have on that mid room court. But it's going to fall back. They don't really catch this push coming in from the top room, though. So the trades are going to be a little bit awkward. Still works out going into their favor. Still holding the lead. A few more. And just like that, they're up at 496. One more kill will separate them from victory here. Along with putting them up at 3-1 to close out the series.
and take control of today's tournament, ending them 100 points and $400 to go along with it. 35 seconds left to try and find that Frag, otherwise they'll oh, win no. by default. A lot of nades coming in against them here. Rockets as well, as we have quite a few members of EPG stuck in a corner, but no, so far it's only gone to the favor of EPG. Hot Pepper picking up two for himself. They're starting to bring this back a little bit, but there you go. Excellence manages to catch one out. 506 to 451 will be the final score, and Lazarus off that will take the series three to one. Yeah, you saw Macaro, uh, Macaro Nina trying to flank in from behind or trying to flank in from a different direction. But even they had the three men push into the center room, as long as those two on the outside were able to just get that one elimination, that's all they needed to close out the series. And that could have been a different story if he didn't get caught out there. If he was actually with his team, maybe they actually could have turned things in their favor. Uh, at the same rate, maybe if a couple of the explosions hit and splashed onto the people who were trying to push in at the same time, that actually would have been enough to close it out a little bit earlier on. But as you can see, again, Romeo going to be at the top of the scoreboard here for Lazarus and Hot Pepper. That's not the first time we've seen him there here for EPG. Yeah, certainly the case. Obviously, still very close at the end of the day when it came down to the actual fragging power for both of those top players. Just a few more accolades going in the direction of Romeo, a few more rewards going his way in order to push that point total a little bit higher up. And I imagine he had quite a few teammates relatively close to him as well. Considering that was the top score, we still had about 300 more points besides that to split up amongst his other teammates. So Lazarus now, I believe pretty much a swap with Forza. So they take a two... I think they actually are ahead by like 25 points, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and as they make their way through to first place, as they were behind by 25 points, so they actually take a 50-point swing in their favor. And they do get themselves one step closer to getting through into the main event in Brazil. Uh, again, I think elements are going to actually shoot up the standings quite a bit as well. Uh, unfortunately, Noble... Well... I think Noble's actually going to drop out of top eight or be relatively... I think actually there is a good chance. It depends on where Knight's kind of placed. Or if anything, they'll be dropping into like a joint eighth place. Hmm. A little bit unfortunate for them since they didn't really fare too well getting knocked out earlier on uh, in the tournament. But nice to see, you know, that we have so many good teams in Europe. It's not as clear cut as like it is in, uh, in North America where we have like those four standard teams time what? in, time out. A lot of upsets, a lot of really good composition. And I mean, even in this one where EPG push ahead and... Have, uh, have themselves, you know, their first bout at the finals against a team like Lazarus. It's still relatively close in most maps. I think there was really only one map where it went definitively in Lazarus' favor, and I think that was our first map besides that. Everything else was was relatively close between the two teams um, and kind of came down to the wire at the end of the day, especially these these TDM matches. Uh, they really kind of ended up coming down to just the last few kills as EPG once again almost was able to round a comeback. This one was obviously a little bit more desperate than the last match that we did have on TDM, but still almost made it happen two times in a row. Well, we should have standings in a, a little bit of time here just to kind of see where things have sorted out between all the teams. Uh, and again, just to keep in mind, we do have the, the podcast coming after. Um, but no, it's nice to see it. Like, uh, it's really cool to see elements, I think, really showing everyone out there that like you, you don't have to be like one of those top well-known teams to be able to break through into top four and to have a chance to qualify for Brazil. I mean, yeah, they didn't win here, but they got a hell of a lot of points, 75 for themselves, uh, if I'm not mistaken, to really shoot up the rankings. I think if you're joining now, I think it's unfortunately a little bit too late. Um, like if you weren't playing any of the previous cups, it's a little bit too late to have that chance to qualify for Brazil. But the thing is you get to practice if you do sign up now, if you actually aren't playing in these tournaments, get some practice and get some really good teams. And of course, come into the next season, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows if we're going to see you, you know, potentially live in an event? Yeah, absolutely. More chances certainly probably going to be coming up in the future for yourselves, so don't wait. Definitely jump in and try to get yourselves a team formed or find yourself a team and jump into the action and try to get some of this prize pool, which is being spread around. Like We before. thought about this, you know. We, we, I think we were talking about it last week. Like yeah. you, me, Lethal, Jackie together. <laughs> get a team, see how we start, can do. Start farming the cups. I mean, we got enough FPS experience, yeah. right? We got to try it. We got to see how well the skills transfer to like a, like a tablet, though. That's the thing. Hmm. Or like a phone. That's a good point. Yeah. Because tablets are banned now, I believe. Are they? I believe, yeah. Oh, there goes there goes my belt. <laughs> yeah, as you got your tablet right in front of you. So you're played and cast at the exact same time. Well, here we go. Now we can see the standings for Europe. You can see Lazarus have jumped from second place to first with 50 points in the lead. Okay, so I wasn't mistaken about where Forza is, but you can see it's still a 75-point difference between second and third place, which is the really key moment. So four is still looking relatively cozy, even even with their early dropout to today's event to try and qualify for Brazil. Meanwhile, Dust Two looking to try and upset, trying to push themselves into a better position and steal that second place spot away. So Blue, what's up? <laughs> so uh, you were coming in here to fill for the show, mm -hmm. and we were going to be uh, springing the podcast on you. Yeah, I am being informed is being canceled for today. 
that. Darn shame. <laughs> but it will be moved to next week, as far as I'm being told. Okay. So we're bringing you Europe. We've got a really big show next week. Though. North America, and then a podcast on top of that. All right. Cool. So next is going to be a lot of fun for all the uh, Guns of Boom fans out there. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of action happening in that show. I believe we're basically done here uh, with the whole show today. I think North America is like on the cusp of finishing off as well, but unfortunately won't be really updating you on what's been going on over there. You have to check it out on the uh, play.eslgaming.com ahead of the Guns of Boom section if you want to see how the standings are working over there and who win or who won that tournament. I believe it was Enix or actually they were in the finals. I don't know if they won, but they probably won the current in first place anyways. Uh, but Blue, thanks again you know, for filling in, joining me on the show today. Hopefully we'll have you for a couple more weeks coming up. Anything you want to say before we do uh, close things out. Awesome, thanks for having me. It's been a bunch of fun being uh, ridiculed for my height. For I was for literally going to say about show. your height again before we did end the show. <laughs> and, and yeah, hope, hopefully we'll get that down to like thirty percent by the by the next time I get to come on here. Thirty so we'll percent, so like thirty percent of my height, so like you are right now. <laughs> I knew that was going <laughs> to. You regret that. A little bit, yeah. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching us, watching us here on the show today. Unfortunately, uh, we do have to apologize again for the delays we did have. Hopefully, next week we'll be sorted out. But keep in mind, next week, start at the same time, we have EU, NA, a nice little podcast coming up, hopefully with a special guest as well. So, hope you guys have a great night, and we'll see you guys next week.